vessel named the Morkoth. However, as you have uh, learned this information, you've also become embroiled in this plot to uh, grow some sort of creature that is destined to devour the stars and who knows what else. So, uh, without wanting to leave any loose ends about the stars, you guys had learned that uh, these cultists gather at the Temple of Therisden and uh, upon arriving you're attacked by some chul, some scum, and, some, and an aboleth. The aboleth fled from the battle, leaving you guys to contend with the remaining creatures, and uh, you were quick to send the Afriti after it. The Afriti, Afriti returned, however, it was charmed and taken over by the Aboleth, mind controlled. And the Aboleth used, the Aboleth named Gothgar, used the Afridi as a bit of a conduit, uh, a way to contact you guys without having to actually show itself again. And it tried to negotiate with you all, saying that there are other Aboleth that have arrived from the trackless sea and that they are trying to steal this sea monster and uh, Gothgar asked you guys for help to try and scare off the other Aboleth basically it said it, all it wanted to do was remain here in the styes for another couple of months and then you'll never see it again you'll never hear from it again you guys weren't so inclined to negotiate with the Aboleth and you moved to pursue it at the end of this altar Oh, sorry, well, where an altar would be at the end of this, uh, like a temple, temple setup they've got here. There is a sunken set of steps leading into an underwater tunnel. And, uh, you were just heading down and Dan had noticed a, a bit of a creek in one of the steps. Found a large amount of treasure inside a flooded hollow. So, this is what's in there. There are eight sacks of coins. Each one has a hundred silver pieces and a hundred gold pieces. So a grand total of eight hundred silver and eight hundred gold. Uh, who's on the party loop? Is that that's usually? Yeah, it's me. Oh, okay. And uh, there was this rusted iron coffer. It has seventeen pieces of jewelry in it. They come to a total of one thousand five hundred and thirty GP. The jewelry is. Uh, is made of gold, so mostly gold, so it's not really tarnished or whatnot, it's not rusted or anything like that. Um, and you can yeah, clean it up and sell it for that much. It's mostly uh, necklaces, gold rings, and uh, bangles, other bits of jewelry, some earrings, mostly gold, a few gemstones. Um, also, in these oil sealed containers, there are five potions of healing, six potions of greater healing, and eight potions of water breathing. Randall drank one of the potions of water breathing. <laughs> Alright, you take the potion, it's got like little bubbles in it, and it tastes like sea water. As soon as you drink it, you don't really feel anything different because I'm pretty sure everyone has water breathing on them anyway. Yep. Yeah. yep. Doesn't stop Ram from drinking it though. <laughs> it just, it kind of tastes like seawater. I feel like that's something Ram would do. Right, there are now How seven we... potions of water breathing. Yeah. How do we want to. Ram's uh, like, do... these taste great. Drinks another three. <laughs> <laughs> How do we want to divvy up the um, healing potions? Maybe give them only a couple now. Yeah, Nara has plenty of healing, so I don't need any of them for her. Yeah, I was about to say, some people can just drink some now. <laughs> Probably good. Because we're trying to get to the apple before it has a chance to rest, right? Yeah. And while we have the genie. Yeah, then I might need to drink a couple. <laughs> Uh, 
there's also a magic lyre as well. Magic instrument. Mm. Oh. It looks very fancy. And, uh, yeah, it, it was kept in this tightly sealed, soon, oil cloth. It's been preserved. And, yeah, it seems to be, like, a the greatest treasure amongst them all. But, uh, they've just kept it away. These cultists have just kept it away. Stowed it here. So, who knows what it could be. It could be any type of magic liar that you could think of. Alright, so, get Lily and Ren to both drink a couple of the greater healing potions right now. Alright, what are those, uh, 3d6? 4d6? Uh, 44 plus 4, I think. Yeah, greater is 44 plus 4. Oh, nice. Okay, so that one's 14. Potion of water breathing, it lets you breathe underwater for one hour. Well. Just so you know. Whoa, what a roll. Huh. Alright, that means everything nice. else is going to go downhill from here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, Might as well just log off. <laughs> yep, we, I'm done. We, we have two more potions. Thanks for coming out. Uh, we got two more potions of greater healing and uh, five I can, regular. I can probably do a prayer of healing if you guys want. Maybe. Uh, if Rady says yes, longer, do it now. How much longer do we have on the be of greedy? All oh, right. Probably half an hour. It hasn't been very long. This is uh, about ten minutes after the fight. Oh, okay. Yeah, he him. went and looked for the guy and he came back and yeah I'll anybody make... else want to do a ritual a cast of some kind maybe 15 does anyone want to get married <laughs> <laughs> what? No, I don't have a bed anyway Never mind. What, what's the role for a regular healing potion it's 2d4 plus 2 As you stand around here, you see the water lapping the few top steps here and this uh, hideous looking carcass, human head dangling off of it, just rotting and festering. It smells very grotesque. It's not very pleasant standing where you guys are in close proximity to this rotting shaft. Oh, you can see the rope eating it. into its flesh. Cool. 17 healing for anyone who wants it. Oh. That was a ritual cast? Uh, yeah, that's what I was saying if anyone has a ritual. Oh, well, I guess I could just refresh water breathing. Cool. Doesn't count much. We already had it, but. Can I try to play the liar? Sure. Make a performance check, Bren. <laughs> I'm a plus four on performance. Look at that. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, I'm done. You see y'all later. Yeah, <laughs> see ya, man. Thanks for coming up tonight. Sweet see you music. Next week. <laughs> on ears. Just In wasted fact, it all. Despite you guys uh, constantly breathing in the uh, grotesque fumes of decay coming from this shark, you kind of just wash that all away, Ren, with your beautiful song. No one's even thinking about what diseases they're catching from. <laughs> smelling this shark at the moment. <laughs> Does he get Song of Rest? It's a class feature now. <laughs> Bard bearing. We're all cursed. Even the, uh, the yeah. Afridi, he, he he actually has a little tear dropping. <laughs> that was... We have... that... How did we get... I've did we get him 17? <laughs> oh, yeah. Does he get uh, healing from the prayer? I don't know. It depends on... Who Sand is healing, he didn't specify. He said to anyone that wants it. It's kind of vague. Alright, uh, they're free. He says, I want it. But I think <laughs> the limit is six people. Uh, I think 
Well, I think I think Nora was completely full up. Uh, I took it. I know Lily took it. I know I took it. Yeah, Nora, Nora took it too, but I can... Untake it? Who did yeah. not take it? Yeah, I didn't really need it. If I don't, if somebody else needs it more, I can not take it. I think players, I was fine. Players before I Genie. <laughs> um, oh, so Sorry, have... Genie. No fly. And have... uh, yeah, Infuse, you do need to actually choose your targets before you cast, before you roll dice and cast the spell. You don't get to roll dice and then choose a target afterwards. Well, um, from that treasure, we still have four regular potions of healing, two graders. Um, who, Are you who counting has... the regular I drank? Because I took that out of my own inventory. Okay, then we have all five. Five potions of healing and two graders. So who uh, didn't take the prayer of healing? You can only target six people and there's eight. Uh, Roderick didn't yeah. have it. I think. The Freedy notes that. But he has to do what Tom says, so. <laughs> yeah. You can tell that this Afridi just um, thinks he's superior than all of you. And he should deserve um, the healing first. Alright, we'll give Thomas one of the greater healings since he doesn't have one. Uh... I am injured, the Afridi says to Thomas. I need healing. <laughs> you are, but you only have to do survive for another half an hour. We gotta go all day. So you'll be good. I would invite you to the city of Brass to say that to my face. Oh, like the city of Sass. That's a... <laughs> that sounds fun. Where I come from, creatures like you are nothing more than slaves. And here I find myself being bound to you. If it were not for that bottle trapping me, these circumstances would be much different. Consider yourself blessed by the greatest of gods to have me serve unto you. I do feel quite lucky. And also, it is, is, it's a path of freedom for you. One more service and you'll be free. Pretty good deal. Got one more greater. Who wants it? I do. <laughs> and if nobody else speaks up, Nora's going to give it to the genie. <laughs> it's fine. Here you go, buddy. I'll <laughs> hand it to the. Abridium. I think I really pulled my weight in that last fight. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hand him the other greater then. <laughs> you are wise, he says as he drinks it. Um, and then we have the five regular potions. Who doesn't have, like, plenty? I have four. I've got one in my inventory. I've got four as well, so I don't need anything. Um, give one to Lily, one to, uh, uh, a couple to Thon. Uh, it's three, and there's uh, a few more. If everybody's stocked, I'll take one to put it up to three regulars. We have one left after that. Who wants it? I'll take it. I put it, I put it in Nara's hands. <laughs> Here you go. Oh, I got. I mean, I got. I got plenty still. If somebody else could make better use of it. Well, Nora hands it to you to hand to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On on that note, then Nara's gonna drink a dose of antitoxin, and she has one more. She's gonna offer if anybody wants it. I, I have, have my own, thank you. I have one. I'll drink mine too. Why not? I've already got two potions affecting me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Just keep what, is, what does the antitoxin do? Bandage on poison saves. I think, right? Or is it resistant to poison? It gives you an advantage oh. on saving throws against poison. So yeah. it's not really... I think Roderick, yeah, Roderick should... Roderick. Yeah, Roger. Yeah, Roger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely a dwarf thing. You insult my constitution. <laughs> Roderick is an anti okay. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually just dwarf blood, is all it is. 
<laughs> are we, I are we, that myself. Are we planning on getting poisoned? Is that the deal? Well, if there's more chules, um, have an I'll, advantage on those. Saves I'll drink it. Nice. I'll take it. Than will take it. More what? Chules. The crabs. Oh yeah. The lobster things. All right, I'll give you a a marker for that little shield with a droplet, poison droplet. It goes for one hour. You've also got okay. the potion of invulnerability and the potion of uh, heroism, though. Yep. Um, eh, screw it. I'll go ahead and quaff the antitoxin too, so I have three things going. Okay. <laughs> Thomas drank his antitoxin. Also. Okay. All right. Into the nasty water, then. Afridi, lead us to the Avalith. Before you guys go any further, I'll uh, give you guys a copy of the underwater combat rules to review. <laughs> just so, in case it comes up. Just so everyone understands how it works. Oh, yeah. Um, anybody want a javelin or spear? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I we'll, grabbed uh, a short sword from the pack. Yeah, we'll go through these rules. So, if you make a melee attack, this is so this is underwater combat. When you make a melee attack, if you don't have a swimming speed, which I believe is everyone, either natural or granted by magic, you have disadvantage on the attack roll, unless the weapon is a dagger, javelin, short sword, spear, or trident. Any other weapon, you'll be at disadvantage. A ranged weapon attack automatically misses beyond the normal range so things like a hand crossbow are not going to be very effective a longbow a little bit more so but even against a target with normal range you still have disadvantage unless the weapon is a crossbow a net or a thrown weapon like a javelin or a spear trident mm -hmm. or dart uh, if you are fully immersed in water you have resistance to fire damage which you'll be fully immersed in water so every one will have resistance to fire damage and uh, then there's also movement rules and for swimming each foot of movement costs an extra one foot so if you move five feet instead it costs you ten and if you have difficult terrain and you're swimming it'll cost you three feet so one square costs you 15 instead of five and if you're in medium or heavy armor you will need an athletics check if you wish to swim Otherwise, you'll be walking on the ground. You won't be able to swim up without an athletics check as part of your move. That will be as part of your movement. And uh, obviously, heavy armor is a lot more difficult to swim in than medium armor. But something like leather or studded leather is not really a hindrance. So. We're just leaving this town to the Aboleth, right? Do <laughs> <laughs> uh, ready? Potions get ready. I'm like, actually, on second thought, Rand would rather watch the entire town be destroyed than have disadvantage on attack roll. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go kill an Aboleth. Freddy, lead us to the Aboleth. Of course. I will be invisible. Damn. Unless you do not want me to. I don't think it matters, does it? It this is, is your... a straight shot. Yeah, stay invisible and I'll help. It is up to you, you, Master. I do as you command me. He turns invisible. And. He starts swimming through this submerged tunnel. It's right. kind of murky. It's pitch black. So uh, the Freddy, I mean, he's already invisible, but uh, he uh, obviously has dark vision. Does anyone need a light source? Well, I think people have light sources on already. Most people have dark vision, I believe. Brent had his um, sword on fire before, didn't he? I have a spell on him. Yeah, Thomas has dark vision spell. No, you've got like a light cantrip on, I think. Yeah, I think Thomas, either Thomas or Lily, somebody cast light, maybe Thawne on my shield. 
Yeah, I did. All right, your sword can still be lit up as well underwater and because magical flame is not going to go out or anything. All right. All right, with that, you guys start swimming down this tunnel. Um, it's it's quite narrow though, so you can only have two ranks of two. So what, which will be your order, marching order? You can move up now. You're free to in the order that you guys want to go. Tomorrow, volunteer to be yeah. any anywhere in the front you guys want her. Yeah, Thomas is definitely not volunteering for the front. So you can go up by Rand if you want. I just found uh, an antitoxin too, so I'll, I'll, be I'll right go ahead and drink that when we start moving. Okay. All right, you guys dive in after the Afridi. And it's a, a submerged tunnel. It's about 10 feet wide. And it twists and winds and bends. You dive down into this pitch black water. It's got decent visibility. It's not really that murky. And your light sources seem to be working effectively. You head into this watery descent and you continue swimming. Some of you walking most likely. Either way, whether you're swimming or walking, you're going to be going the same speed. You're following the trail of the bubbles that the Afriti is leaving. Um, keep in mind that he does not have water breathing, so he's holding his breath. Oh, I could have gave him a potion of water breathing. <laughs> Still can, right? He doesn't. If you, if you want, I mean, he's kind of already started swimming off, but you can always give him an order to head back. Yeah, it's fine. All right. It's um. You've been traveling for quite a while now, and. Uh, the Afridi just vanishes. It's been more than an hour. You've traveled close to a mile. Oh. Which takes you guys yeah, the better part of about 30 minutes. So he just vanishes and there hasn't been any twists or turns. You've been following the same path of just a, a submerged tunnel constantly. The entire time. There hasn't been any turn offs or anything like that, and he just said um he hasn't seen the Aboleth yet. You're you're presuming that the Aboleth is continuing you'll find that you'll run into him if you continue on down this pathway. Your uh yeah, your potions have run out too, Norin. It's been an hour now. But the antitoxins are still they're still up for a little while longer. You've got about 10 minutes left or something like that. Yeah, a mile at difficult terrain takes you guys close to an hour. So it's just been continuing snaking westward mostly with twists and turns flooded along its entire length. The tunnel is about seven feet in diameter roughly and the walls are just made of this like green stone it must be like underneath the surface of the water probably like probably not that deep you think you're, you're probably about 30 feet under the surface of the water or something like that in the sunken tunnel and no sign of the aboleth so far And you continue on westward if you want to move, if you guys want to continue on. Okay. Yeah. Are we able to communicate with each other or is it like bloop, 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 bloop? Because you can breathe water, you can speak. You probably okay. uh, need to be relatively close to each other or you need to scream. You said it's screaming when we get to the Avalanche. <laughs> Is that it's 30 feet to the surface? You don't know, because that's just a guess. That's just an estimate. Of course, now y'all know every time Rand farts. This is a tunnel. 
This is about we already knew every time you farted. <laughs> it's about seven and a half feet in diameter. Tunnel. It's a Mo's tunnel. You're just trying. You're just guessing that distance from how much you've been going down and the water pressure building up. As you uh, move a little bit further, you uh, you get a bit of telepathic contact from the Abeleth again. The voice comes into your mind. Ah. Oh. So you have come. I've been waiting. Welcome to Landgraves Folly. Have you happened to have a change of mind by chance? It's not too late to take me up on my offer. In fact, I'd even be willing to wait another day. <laughs> Someone sounds scared. It's not us. I'm not scared. I'm merely giving you a chance, an opportunity to change your mind. And suddenly, as you round this corner, the Aboleth swims forward. Why are you here then? Are I'm you here to guests. finish me? And you notice that the Avaleth is completely oh, uninjured. It seemed to have uh, recovered from the previous fight. Damn. It's had an hour. Yeah. Well, you got this in the first guess, so. Well. Even if you kill me, the other Ab the other Avalets, they will not be so quick to negotiate with you. For they wish to cultivate it. They have also heard the whispering. But I am the one that should serve it. Well, since you said it yourself, if you're the one that should serve it, you're the one that we should get rid of. <laughs> I may only be able to enslave way. one of you, but I know not. <laughs> who is the easiest of you all. To bend your minds, I've been observing you. Yes, you will be mine. And the Abeleth rushes forward to attack. All right, the first thing that happens is a lair action. You're in the Avaleth lair. Yep. All right, Whoa. Gothka rushes in to attack. And there's a, a surge of water that just, it washes over everyone. And it uh it knocks you guys back. Like it comes flooding from behind the Avaleth, a large heavy current. Everybody make a strength saving throw. Oh, I don't have less anymore. Yeah. Mine should be at advantage. My speciality. You have advantage wow. on strength save? Oh, no, strength checks, my bad. Alright, yeah, this current just... It, it washes yeah. you back, Norin. And, uh... You're knocked prone. You're disorientated. Well, actually, because you're in army, you'd probably literally be knocked prone. Lily, that surge washes you back 20 feet as well. And you're also knocked prone. Roderick, that flood of, of water washes over you flings you back 20 feet and you're prone. Nara, you stand your ground, unflinching, unyielding. Rend, even you, are knocked back 20 feet. Said, only if I was raging. <laughs> and then, 
You're washed away. Angrily, but not with rage. <laughs> Thomas, you're washed away, leaving only Nara standing. Nara, you're up. Uh, Nara rushes forward and attacks with the spear. When you spear the Avaleth, the spear goes straight through it and you hear a chuckle. <laughs> and the image of the Avaleth starts to fade, becomes transparent, like an illusion. Uh, Nara yells, trickery! <laughs> and, uh... I'm going to stab at it again. The same thing happens. It has no substance at all. The spear goes straight through it. And the Aboleth is translucent. Lily. I'll stand up. Try to move forward. Are you dashing? Oh, right. Half movement, right? Yeah. I'll put on a grid as well, so it's uh, easier for you guys to see the squares. Yeah, 15 to stand up, and then every space you move, it costs you 10 feet. So I guess I will dash, yeah. Uh... Um, so first round of combat, I get an extra 10 feet of movement, so it brings up to 35, and half that to stand up is... 15, round down. Okay, uh, so you got 20 left, which means I can move 10. Nice. Um, yeah, I, will, I will cast a bless spell. Uh, how many people do we have? One, two, six. Well, I can get five people, so... I cast it at third level. That's right. Um, so, I'll give it to myself and uh, everyone except Than. <laughs> he didn't bless himself. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No offense, Than. Offended. <laughs> Too late. That's how the afraid he felt. Yeah. <laughs> the kindred spirits were the afraid of then. <laughs> then. I can't I'm see gonna, Nara, by the way, so it's not on Nara. I'm going to cast Dispel Magic on the Bless. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I'll stand up. That gives me uh, half my movement. So, I don't know. It's confusing with 35 movements, so I have no you round idea. down. So, anyways, you round, round down. down. So, so I can move 15. 10 feet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. Pretty much um, with everything in, in 5e, you round down. Well, that really threw me off. So, um, I'm going to... I'm going to, uh, jeez, I can't get to Ren, can I? Damn it. I'll move towards Ren. You said I can go 10 feet, right? Yeah. If you're just using a movement speed, that would be 30. 15 to stand up and then 25, oh, sorry, 35 it would be. So that's as far as I can go, where I'm at? Yeah. So I would love 30, to get to there. 35 feet of movement. Actually, I can bonus action dash, can't I? Yeah, I'll do that. Right. And I get to rend, and I will cast freedom of movement. Will that help with underwater stuff before I do it? Yes, that actually. gives, that actually, like, it gives him a swim speed. Or it doesn't oh, actually, perfect. actually, 
it um oh. yeah it oh. imposes no penalties on his movement or attack so basically oh, a sweet speed okay i'm casting that on rend thank you sir and uh and then i do have more movement you said i have moved 10 20 30 that, that's too much that that's was, it yeah H oh right because i already moved ten. sorry i forgot yep yeah sorry okay end turn Rand. all right uh so i'll stand up touch 20 so so each of these is just five for me now right yeah you can move around okay. freely it's better than any of us 15 20 I'm uh, I'm just gonna take the dodge action for that for this turn. Okay. All right. All right. Stand up. Five. Uh, I'm gonna dash. far as I can get, and that's my turn. Thomas. Well, he's half my over to stand. 15 feet, so I'll move on square, and I'll dash. And end my turn. The Avalas chuckles again. <laughs> and coming up behind the illusory Avalas, is an Abeleth. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And uh, he eyes you off, Nara. Mm, no, 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 no. Your mind is too strong. He eyes you off, Ren. Yes, perfect. You'll do. Ren, make a wisdom saving throw. Feel him <laughs> reach into your mind and become charmed by the Avaleth. You are now <sighs> under his control. I only need you to dispose of the rest. <laughs> then he moves forward and he's going to drop this illusory image. And he's going to end his turn there. But he will take a lair action now. On initiative count 20. And he's going to cause the water to become a conduit for his rage and everyone except Roderick and Ren need to make a wisdom saving throw ah uh, yeah there's uh, this like scream psychic scream that floods the water assaulting some of your minds and um, most people are not too affected by it at all actually yeah. it doesn't bother you nara it doesn't bother you lily it doesn't bother you norin but thomas and it doesn't bother you either then but uh thomas you take five psychic damage ah! <laughs> nara says the says the clown <laughs> oh yeah you're still dressed as a clown <laughs> Did uh did you catch that message I sent you, Sub? Um Just just a heads up, man, I'm having a bad rainstorm oh, yeah. right now. Yeah, hopefully it won't be an issue, but if I lose power or something, I'll be back as quick as yeah. possible. I saw that. Yeah, I usually won't be able to respond to whisper messages. It's better just to kinda of say it because got other things going on. Alright, yeah, no but, problem. Yeah, I, I got it. Uh, Nara moves forward and starts stabbing with her spear. That hits. And this time, the Aboleth is real. The flesh is pierced by the spear. You swing again, and a 17 hits. Push it into the Aboleth. A bit of slimy green blood spills out into the water. You stab again, just catching the Aboleth for 6 damage. A couple of small injuries so far. Do, uh, do I need to be making con saves here? 
Um, yeah, it's probably it's not really probably going to be relevant, but yeah, you will need to make a con save from the mucus three of them. Yeah, it, it's not going to uh, become relevant, but I'm just going to give you this skull icon. <laughs> no, no, no reason. It's fine. Nothing happens. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> but, but you, you don't feel any any effects when you're covered with this mucus. Nothing changes for you. The Aboleth will attack you. He'll swipe you with his long tail using a legendary action. And he actually hits. Whoosh, hits you for 11 bludgeoning damage. Lovely. Okay, um... Uh... I think what I'll do is uh, use my bonus action to blade sing. I will uh, walk five feet forward, and I'm gonna try to knock the sense back into red. I'll draw. I'll draw out my short sword and uh, try to poke some sense into him. Okay, you're at disadvantage because Rend is dodging. All right. Uh, Oh crap, I don't have a short sword on my sheet. Like, I have it in my inventory, I just don't have, like, an attack for it. You can drag it. Oh yeah, I can drag it. Yeah, you can, if you add one from the companion, it'll fill it out automatically. I'll do that right now. Well, that seems to have frozen my entire character sheet up. Let's see how I can... <laughs> Short sword. It, it just says accepting draw from compendium, and it's like frozen there. And it must be glitched up. Oh, there we go. It added two now. Do you see it? Uh, I s Let's see if it works. Let's try. It does work. A 16 misses Ren. That is a hit. Oh, I need to click that twice. Alright, Rand, you take 8 points of piercing damage, and when you take damage, as you guys had seen earlier, it might snap you out of the charm. Make a wisdom saving throw. Come on. Pretty sure I clicked it. There we go. Nice. Alright. You, uh, yeah, when you saw Rand, his eyes were glazed over with this translucent mucus. But he blinks a couple of times, and his eyes return back to normal. And the Avalas oh. screams, No! No, I've done How that three times it? a day! I'm... My friend! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Avalas can only enslave so many people. and It only had one chance left, so it is wailing now. Uh, I only had two more squares left, so I moved them. Uh... How often do you get to attack your own teammates? Got to take the opportunity, right? Yep. Speaking of that, Rend, if you want to take an opportunity to attack, you actually get your reaction back. <laughs> uh, I'll, hold, I'll hold it just in case. All right, the Aboleth is actually going to attack Nara again with a, a tail attack. Miss. Roderick. Um, I'm going to move up a bit, and I can't see anything, so... I'll dash. Do I get the use of the um You should have line of sight of the Aboleth from where you where you are. Uh from where I am, I can possibly see if I the corner of its health bar. I guess. But yeah. um it take well, I mean, from measuring it you do have line like, of sight on the Aboleth. I don't know why you can't really see the token. Okay. But you do. Which square is that in? It's like this one. Okay, yeah, I cannot see anything so there. It must just be because it's like an awkward angle, basically. Okay. But you do have line. But if you line. say so. Yeah. I will um, shoot it then. It would be three quarters uh, cover, but yeah, you've got eyes on okay. it. Okay. <laughs> you got baited. If you can only see one tiny little section of it, it's going to be three quarters yeah. cover. And that's a man. You are at disadvantage as well. Yeah. That hits. You send an arrow flying and uh, it skims the Aboleth. Just managing to hit it. 
Cool. The Avalath is going to wail on Nara again with a long tail using a legendary action. It's a mess. Damn. Alright, I will move up 10, 20. And I will put, um, I will put, what's it called? Path to the Grave on the Ebleth. Okay. That's my action. His flesh becomes dry and cracked and blistery. The next attack on it. It'll be vulnerable too. And, um, bonus action, help action. Just can't resist. All the help. Can't resist, especially when Ren is right after me. Another surge of water washes Nan back. Yeah. Alright, so, <laughs> Ren, you're up. So, yeah, for a brief right. moment, you could hear the Aboleth reach into your mind and start to control you but you quickly snap out of that so that makes me angry and i rage <laughs> uh, rage and then uh <laughs> i'll uh i'll reckless attack <laughs> okay <laughs> to give me a regular attack i guess good job ryan that hurts <laughs> You hack into it. It does resist the fire. 16 points of damage. <laughs> Puts a decent injury on Gothgar. All right, once Path more. to the grave. Oh, Should yeah. have been double. That would have been double as well. So, oh. 32 damage instead. And uh, a 20 is a hit. Well, no. It'd be He's 16, wouldn't it? Yeah, just you freedom of movement. You got freedom of movement. Oh, you so do. Attack oh, and not at disadvantage anymore. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> kind of why I put it on you there, buddy. I was just damage. thinking movement. <laughs> you, you are getting the mucus on you as well, so you do need to make two Constitution saving throws around. All right. Jeez. Yeah, yeah nothing happens. <laughs> Disregard the skull. <laughs> if it's po if it's poison, I got I got the uh, resistance, right? Not a poison. Oh, okay, just making sure. It's a <laughs> transformative mucus. Poison. Poison. <laughs> Completely different. So two attacks. Save, it, it's save. really okay. not affecting you, but it's it's covering you. It's like it's a translucent slime. Same stuff that the Aboleth is covered in. The same stuff that was like on your face and your eyeballs. I'm sure it's fine. Okay, Norin. Uh, how tall did you? It, it's is it still uh, is it still like the the same size tunnel? Yeah, it's it's roughly seven and a half foot in diameter. Some areas it may be ten feet in diameter, but usually it's three three wide and three tall, basically. Okay. I'm gonna start winging javelins at it. Um. Uh, here's one. Hit. Javelin sticks into the Avalon. It's looking almost bloody. Here's two. Hit. Throw that Javelin over the top of Nara and Ren. Sticks into the Avalon for seven damage. Uh, come on. And that is a hit. This better not be another seven. And another it. seven damage. <laughs> I think you need to uh, buy some new javelins, Norin. Those ones are, yeah, are not very good quality. So. Did you get them up like I some those ones from like the first session or something? They're not very good. Uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> those those might be the ones that I got off like the goblins. I'll <laughs> see. I'll, I'll start looking through them. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think. Let me check my unwavering mark to make sure it is a, uh, it has to be a melee weapon. Yep, it does. Okay, melee weapon attack. So, never mind. Um, I will come forward, though. More square, and that's it. 
comment. All right. And you said it's only five or ten feet tall in here. Not very high. It's um. Oh no, it's yeah, fifteen. So it's three by three essentially. Roughly. Okay, I'll I'll swim up all the way to the to the roof on my way here. Okay. Um, to have a clean line over Nara here. Um, I'll shoot a sunbeam at it. All right, hit it with a sunbeam, and this golden light will just beam straight into it. It makes a con save as the beam flashes in its three eyeballs. And it screeches. Wah! Starts thrashing around in the water, splashing everywhere, and it's blinded. Nice. Alright, it's going to use Did a layer that... action. It's got a layer action first. And it's going to just invoke the ambient magic of its lair again and just cause another tidal surge. Just trying to uh, knock everyone back. I think when you erase the illusion, you took the Ableth out of the turn order. Oh, yeah. It's its turn now, too. <laughs> it goes on three. Strength it. Ah, uh, not yet, not yet. It's going to attack first, and then you, then, then it'll do that. All right, it's blinded now, so it's thrashing around, and uh, yeah, it's just flicking its tentacles around like wild. First attack at Nara. Miss. It's at disadvantage as well, by the way. And uh, then at Ren. That's a miss. And then at Rend as well. And that misses. And I think Sunbeam, it's like just blinded for one round. I think so. I think it's one round. Until your next turn. Yeah. Okay. Still blinded. Because I, I can keep, keep shooting it. So it's a save every time. All right. And now. It's going to just use the title, so I just try and push everyone back. That'll be a strength saving throw for all. Uh, I gotta ask, is, does Nora have Bless on her? I thought oh, no, I saw that. I couldn't see. Okay, gosh. The time. Also, I probably would have if I had the NRT, but. Dang it, man. Lily's knocked back 20 feet prone. Thomas, you don't move. Roderick, you stay put. Norin, you stay put. Sam, you stay put. Nara, you fail. Oh, I want to indomitable that if that's a fail. Okay. Orange, you ain't moving. <laughs> and Nara pushes you back 20 feet and knocks you prone. Nara, you're up. How does that work again? Standing up's half my movements, then I can move what ten feet. You, it costs you fifteen feet to move up, uh, to stand up, to get up from prone, and then, so you have thirty feet, right? So you have fifteen feet left, which would be one square. That would be ten. Are you taking action? Uh, I'll take. Uh, dodge. You could dash. Dash up to it. Dodge. Yeah, it's a better idea. I'll do that then. Dash. Yes, dash. Alright, the Aboleth is going to try and hit Rend with a tentacle at the end of your turn, Nara, using a legendary action. And it completely misses. Lily, you can use half your movement speed to stand up. Okay, I'll go ahead and do that. 20 to stand up. you got 20 left. Two spaces. So there's, there's my other 20. Uh, and then I, I have excellent spell selection. My only damaging spell is uh, Fireball, and we're underwater. So 
He won't hurt us as much. Told the dead. Ding dong dong. Yeah, I gotta go with that. I don't have anything else that does damage. It Boom. dings, it dongs, and it dooms. The other left keeps nice. on screeching and it's badly injured this time, more injured than it was last time you fought it, but it doesn't really look like it's going to show any signs of retreating because from your understanding, there's two more Avalefs behind it. It's basically being pincered attacked by you guys and the other Avalefs. It's going to still try to win this fight by tail slapping Rend in the face. And it hits. You take he 11. Still at this He's still at disadvantage, right? He is, but he also has advantage on Rend because Rend went reckless. Oh. Um, can I? I want to use my warding maneuver. Okay. Even though there's help action. You uh, try to ward off the Abolesh tail, but it still hits Rend. Does he get resistance to that? Yeah, I mean, he already has resistance, though, right? Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. All right, and then uh, when the tentacle hits you. You need to make a constitution saving throw, Ren. Alright, uh, come on. Jeez. Nothing happened. Just gonna give you another one of these <laughs> scary skull icons. <laughs> cool. I like the decoration. There we go. Yeah. Collecting the badges. The icon may be called diseased, but just <laughs> ignore that. Uh, <laughs> nothing actually happens at the moment. I'll let you know when you have only moments to live. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> right up. Um, I am going to cast a spell. I'm going to just cast Sacred Flame on it. All right, Holy Flame falls down on top of the Aboleth and can feel the radiation that tries to get out of the way of it but it's way too slow and it's just eating into its flesh damn actually yeah one more one more attack it's gonna actually attack Norin at disadvantage legendary action the long tentacles it's a mess all right then you're up all right I too will do a Toledano on the creature. Alright, fails. It takes another 18 necrotic damage. And its flesh rots. Its skin withers. It's almost dead. Um, I'll put the help action. Go for the eyes, boo. <laughs> <laughs> it's blinded already. I didn't press out of the turn, sorry. They'll never see it coming if you go for the eyes. It's blind. <laughs> right. Alright, I'm a re reckless attack. You're looking like a, a Christmas decoration with all those icons on you. That hits. Lucky you had advantage see. from uh, see being blinded. Many. From it being blinded and no other reason. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Here we go. <laughs> you slash into it. 20 points of damage the the great sword is like embedded a, a, about a foot into its slimy fish like side fire is also burning it it's still alive all right that's a hit you pull the great sword out and you hack into it again with all your might and this time the blade just sears straight into it and you literally slice it in two the parts split it to the side and all of this mucus is ejected out into the water and tails start coiling up other tentacles thrash about and jig in its final movements of death do i need two more con saves no i'm just gonna put another <laughs> i think i've run out i've run out of disease icon so you don't have to make it anymore <laughs> no what? Uh, yeah you've already got it so <laughs> Well, you know, figure. We're gonna maybe nickname just... you Typo and Mary. <laughs> you're, just pretend that you're Everybody now immune up. to it, Ren. <laughs> Social distancing from me. <laughs> All right, the fight is over. The Abolith has been cut into pieces. I'm 
But there could be more. Or well, there probably is more. I actually gotta take a quick moment to recover from that fight. You notice something about Ren. He uh he has a quality that you've seen before on Mr. Dory, the scum. And also that, that nobleman way back in Yata. His skin has become translucent and slimy. And you can actually like see his vascular system. Some of his bones. It looks very slimy. And you're so covered poor. in this, this ooze. Yeah, it's just a poor invisibility spell. <laughs> <laughs> Were we able to fix that guy it's in your car? Invisibility cream that just works on your skin. How <laughs> did you rent? Uh, they they monster. had a cleric um, tend to him, the house cleric. Wish we had one of those. <laughs> well, I've had this charm I've been holding on to for, I don't know, eight levels or something that might help. Um, yeah, I'll burn two charges of this this Charm of Restoration to cast a Lesser Resto on him, see if that helps. It does. Immediately, that slimy glaze that covered Ren to subside, and he's back to normal. Oh, I feel better. Thanks, man. Where'd all your icons go? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I was collecting them. And Nara, despite coming into contact with this mucus, you, that net didn't happen to you. <laughs> like that as normal as Ren never gets. <laughs> as oh. you look forward, the submerged tunnel continues. And the Aboleth mentioned something about. Uh, Land graves folly. Whatever that means. Has any of us heard of Landgrave? We could make a so like, history check. Is it about rocks? <laughs> well, graves can be made of stone. And uh did you guys want to um hold up a little bit? Because Roderick's and Thomas have got some It'd be plus stuff. eight if it was. <laughs> <laughs> now you guys can we recall just... the name Landgrave. It's actually the name of a, a noble. So, uh, as you guys know, the styes, it used to be a glorious merchant town and a, a holiday haven for the, the wealthy people of Favoring, but it fell into disrepair over many decades. And there was uh, this eccentric noble named Bryson Landgrave. And he announced his intention to discover what lay on the underside of the world. To that end, he ordered the digging of a great pit that would eventually lead to what was there. Locals dismissed his effort as mad, but the noble was rich. No one complained about the wages he offered to dig it. But for reasons that no one could comprehend, Landgrave chose to excavate down through the solid rock beneath this small islet about a mile or so west of the styes. The work went well at the start, but then workers began to perish in bizarre or mysterious accidents. In an attempt to counter his ill luck, the noble commissioned the construction of a temple using material removed from the hole at the dig site to confer blessings on his work. And, as Landgrave's luck would have it, on the night that the temple was to be consecrated, a violent earthquake struck the islet, which sank into the sea, and took the pit, the temple, and all but a handful of workers, and Landgrave himself with it. Only the temple's spire is still visible above the waves, to this day, as a testament to what becomes rich, what becomes a rich fool and the site became known as Landgrave's Folly. And uh, yeah, by by waves, that would be a bit of a, a stretch to call them that, um, because you're in a, a swampy terrain, it's probably more of a cesspool than anything. 
um, the water is becoming uh, a little bit murky. It's not really affecting your visibility too much, but uh, there's a, a horrible stench that you guys can breathe in now. With your water breathing. So you're near about a mile west of the skies as well. So land craves folly. Yeah, it's folly. You're expecting to come to a temple of some sort. Oh boy. The tunnel continues on. Again, this tunnel is uh, about seven and a half feet in diameter. Continues snaking around and winding. You can just hear the constant din of water rushing through your ears. As you round a corner, you start to see some weed encrusted tiles. There's algae, seaweed, and some rubble and refuse. Bit of silt covering the floor and a few stone tiles here and there start to form the exit of this tunnel. Seb, is we going to burn six sorcery points on a fourth level spell slot? Okay. I'm going to touch some of it with the flame tongue. Alright, it uh, it kind of just gets scorched. It's, it's completely soaked, so... You'd have to hold it there for quite a while to burn. It's not like sc screaming or anything at us. No. <laughs> or recoiling. You can cast speak with plants if you like. But nothing happens. It's it's just a an algae. It's growing all, right. all around the sides of this tunnel. There's little strands of it dangling off. You have to. I'm sure it's safe. Seaweed and whatnot. Some rubble, I will be. broken, splintered bits of water mixed around, and you start to see the tiles of the entrance of a temple. As you look in, you can see layers of silk covering the stone floor, and uh, the temple proper up ahead. There are tangled mounds of collapsed scaffolding lying towards the east of this area where you've entered, and uh, there's a light, a bit of a glow. And there's also two aboleths here, by the way. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I think I stepped into a wall. <laughs> um, yeah. You're stuck. So everything went black. I think you might have accidentally deleted your stuff. You melded into stone? <laughs> you, you melded into Did stone. I? You accidentally... It yep. happened. You accidentally cast melded into stone. Oh, yeah. It's what I always wanted anyway, so... Wild magic surge. Just move yourself wherever. I'm making you guys for the next session. <laughs> Alright, so... I have uh, become one with the earth. Alright. You, uh... You look around you and... In the darkness looms the bulk of a sunken temple. And... The building's facade is a mess. Partially collapsed walls, ruined scaffolding. Making it appear as though it's still under construction when it sank. It's hard to tell which parts weren't finished and which parts were damaged by the collapse. Towards the back of this temple, there is a light that fills a pit. It originates in a flicker of intricate magical sigils to cover the top edge of this pit. The sigils are woven into the ground and a complex tapestry in a circular formation that has been laid here, illuminating them with a magical light. And there's something in there, something in this hole. The light itself is undulating, writhing, like an obscene carpet of snakes. Below their pulsing glow, it descends into utter darkness. And uh, in between that pit and you guys are two aboleths, just as the other one said. And they speak to you guys telepathically, so their voices appear in all of your minds in common, so everyone understands it. 
and only one of them seems to do the talking. Hmm, you're not Guthgar. Interesting. Did he send you here to try and finish up? Not really, no. Then why are you here? Uh, Gothgar well, simply let you on by? Or did you finish <laughs> him first, that fool? He was a fool. That much is true. Hmm. Excellent. Suddenly, one of the Aboleths uh, starts to kind of flap his tail a little bit and they kick up all the silt in the room. Everything becomes heavily obscured. But you don't hear the Aboleths moving towards you. Forgive us. But we prefer our camouflage. We like to take precaution. We should thank you for dealing with Golfga. <laughs> We were waiting for him to come back so we could kill him. <laughs> but how do we know you're not enslaved by him? What proof do you have that you've killed the rogue? Well, uh, should have kept one of the tentacles. <laughs> well, sure you... he said that he could only enslave three of us, so... <laughs> like... <laughs> and I definitely wasn't Can one of the ones he enslaved. See into our minds and see the truth of it. Hmm. Seeing into your minds would harm our own. For such poultry minds would be degenerative to ours. And perhaps your feeble minds would be crushed if we were to be linked. However, there is a simple test. Tell us that we are superior. That we will take the creature. And that Gothgar, if he is alive, swears fealty to us. For his pride would never allow him to say that willingly. <laughs> Is the creature that you speak of in the pit back there? Oh, yeah. The baby. <laughs> mm, it's down there. Though it's still immature. <laughs> it is growing quite quickly. <laughs> what is it? This. There's a Kraken. Oh my. I feed the Kraken. I just remembered I have to go feed my goldfish. I'm gonna... <laughs> it's been nice knowing yeah. you guys. I just remembered I was supposed to meet my sister in a nearby town. Hmm. <laughs> we have had uh, a little bit of trouble trying to contain it. It seems quite moody shall we say so you cannot control it either what are you trying to say that we lack the capacity to control it yep uh i did not say know. that you did kids will go through a we stage you know will control it and if we cannot then we will kill it. <laughs> Why do you say that we cannot control it? Why do you, you presume such a thing? 
Well, it's called the Kraken Society, not the Abolith Society, for a reason. What do you know about the Kraken Society? That they uh, get Abolith to do their bidding? We do no one's bidding. We will take the Kraken and we will use it to combat the other Kraken. <laughs> Slarkathel. The terror of the ocean. For too long. What's Slarkathel doing? Has the Kraken threatened to dominate the seas? But we, Avalet, we were created to rule this world and rule the oceans. <laughs> the Kraken will fall to us. I don't see why any of this concerns you, little creatures. Why don't you be good little creatures now and swim along? Swim back to where you came from and forget that you ever saw any of this. I'm actually not that good at swimming. I just walk on the bottom. Run along then. We've no intention of getting into combat with seasoned adventurers. We should flee this place. Us? Flee? Of course. Of course. <laughs> and why would we do that when we are so close now? Close to death. Death? By what me? The Kraken. <laughs> or those seasoned adventurers you were talking about. Are you threatening us? I guess we kind of are, huh? Make an intimidation like check, Thomas. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I don't think so. There may be only two of us, seven of you. Our power knows no limit. We will soon crush you, and you will make eh. fine feet. Or the baby. I suppose it does have limits since you can't control it, but you know. We can control it. We will enslave it. Yeah. It will be under our control. I'm sure you know of our ability to enslave things three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I've heard. You're, uh, We've heard such rumors. <laughs> you're, um, I don't know, brother? I, I don't know how Abeloths work in family structures. Uh, he informed us of that uh, many times. We do not have the same notions of family and reproduction, such idle things and notions. But ah, You must lead a very boring life then. <laughs> oh, we... I assure you, we have many other uses for our tentacles. Now. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. Uh. <laughs> Alright, the silt has... has gone down now. It's settled. That was just because they kicked it up and it flooded the temple, but it's settled now. I'm afraid... Uh, we are having troubles negotiating. This conversation is breaking apart quickly. Uh, well, it's sort of expected. Uh, Gongoth said that you wouldn't ne negotiate at all, so that you talk this much is uh, rather astonishing, really. How much would you be willing to sell the Kraken for? <laughs> 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 it's a barter. Sell. <laughs> we do not sell. 
bother ourselves with such pointless bauble. We have a longbow plus one. <laughs> for a brief moment, we could trade it for a dragon. We almost did second guess ourselves and our ability to enslave the Kraken. We thought that perhaps once it gets bigger, it may break free of our control. <laughs> but you've just proved to us how superior we are to all of you and all other kind on this world. I so, doubt it. We will make you a concession. You may pick one of your kind as a sacrifice. We will feed it to the baby. And that leaves six of you left. Willingly succumb to our enslavement. And you'll be a part of something much greater. Or, counter offer, we can kill you. And then kill the baby. I for sure vote for sacrificing the Ableth. If you said that in any oh, other context, yes. context, I would be worried. <laughs> <laughs> Come now. So Come you on. do have intentions to destroy us. Very well Just then. Just like Volga. And the Ableth goes into a karate stance. And then yeah. flips you <laughs> forward. Bring it on. <laughs> We're all in the <laughs> Little tentacle <laughs> approach. Alright, the uh, the ceiling of the temple is 20 feet high, if that becomes relevant at all. Everything is flooded. And, yeah. It's underwater. Everything's completely submerged. As you guys have been standing around, there are two exits. There looks like the, the spire, that spire that you guys recall like jutting up out of the ward like a, a tower over here and then another side entrance over here but you know you're about 40 feet underwater so this temple is sunken and rend you're up first all right i will go ahead and use my last rage for the day get off here there we go and 35 so, go up here, and uh, we will reckless attack that guy. <laughs> Come on. Hit. There we go. Are you hacking to the Aboleth to resist the fire damage? 15 points. Yep. It's about as tough as the other one that you just killed. Take another swing and a 14 is going to miss. The Aboleth yeah. quickly blocks you with its tentacles. You do need to make a constitution save, Ren. And the oh, Aboleth yeah. is going to tail whip you using a legendary action. You take 5 points of bludgeoning damage. And you don't have to get another skull icon, Ren. <laughs> well, maybe next time I'll get one. <laughs> Roderick. Um, I will move up into the area a little bit more. Um, and then I'll cast a Hunter's Mark if I can find my job list on uh, that one. And shoot to kill, hopefully. You want to one shot it? I would like to. Can we take a vote on that? I mean, oh, it's it's have bless. Nine, <laughs> seven, sorry. 17, it hits. And uh, the arrow sticks into the other left for 6 damage. And again. That's another hit. The arrow pierces the other left near its face. 15 damage. Makes that other look a little bit injured. And a dreadful ambush. That's another hit. And... The arrow goes straight into its mouth and harpoons out the side of its face. It's a decent injury. Excellent. The Aboleth is going to heal itself. <gasps> it kind of takes in a psychic breath. And 
that arrow gets expunged from its side. Falls out into the water and that injury heals up. It's not completely healed, but you got a little bit of healing. And so we gotta check something as well. Okay. Alright, uh, the Aboleth is gonna take its turn now and it says yes <laughs> you have much power and your mind is weak we will take use of you and Rand make oh, wisdom it... saving throw oh he said weak I thought like Broderick or somebody come on <laughs> 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 oh. yeah uh -huh. The Aboleth just kind of groans psychically in your mind, and then it just moves over a little bit. Ends its turn there. Fails its enslavement attempt. Fan. Um, I'm going to... Draw a triangle? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> so I'll, I guess I'll have to bonus action dash to get more movement. And I will cast Bless on Rend, Nara, myself. Thank you. And, uh,. Yes. This Aboleth is going to attack Rend with a tail swipe. And whoosh, it hits for 10 damage. Alright. Stop, 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 stop. On the bottom. Uh, okay. The one that has already been hit a few times. Uh, we're going to start winging javelins again. Here's the first one. Man. Oh, that's a bad one. Second one. Crit. Slashes into the Aboleth's tail for 12 damage. Honestly surprised me that one of those was a one. <laughs> um, and then I'll throw one more. Hit. Now the javelin sticks into its side. It's looking a little bit injured. Uh, that's it. <laughs> that same Aboleth is going to heal itself. Again, it seems to exhume psychic energy from around it. And that javelin <laughs> falls out of its flesh onto the ground and that injury closes up. Lily. Alright, uh, Lily's going to weave her hands as if in slow motion she's going to try to put slow on them okay sorry i was just sorting something else out all right slow they both make wisdom save the top one fails and becomes slowed the one on the bottom doesn't seem so affected by it Minus two AC, minus two deck saves. Can't use reactions. Speed is hard. Right, this very slow Aboleth. It uh, swims lazily towards Ren, and everything it does is slow motion, and it tries to enslave him. Warnova, <laughs> Warnova, it says. And you need to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, son of a bitch! <laughs> and Ren turns around and he's like, just muke his face. And you become charmed by the Aboleth. That's its turn. And it's no longer slowed. One of us! One of us! It says at the very end of its turn. <laughs> Uh, actually, sorry, it's still going to keep moving. 
now that you're charmed, it's going to move in here. Norin. Sorry. Thomas. Don't worry what... <laughs> I don't know why I said Norin. It's not like it's about to attack you or something soon. Uh, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll swim up and forward 15 feet. Um... Yeah, I might as well try it. I'm gonna try to drop a synaptic static on him. Okay. Be able to hit both yeah. of them. And rent. <laughs> Avoid rent. Should be able to. Yeah. Like that. Bam. Yeah, if you hit Ren with it, he might get a chance to save, but then he'd have, like, minus D6 as well. Right. These creatures with their Six. alien minds are highly intelligent. However, they are affected by psychic damage. It spikes their minds for 18 points each. Right, and... I'll, um, bonus action quick and a ray of frost at this one that's in range. That frigid blue beam is a direct hit. 24 cold damage. It freezes up some of its fins, slowing its movement. Hit it pretty bad. It's going to take a legendary action. This guy. And he's going to tail swipe Norrin with his long tail. Of course he does. He hits for 15 bludgeoning damage. Nara. Uh, Nara's gonna dash. At the end of your turn, Nara, this Avaleth attacks Norin with a tail. It slaps you for another 13 bludgeoning damage. And, uh, Rend. You receive yep. a telepathic command by this Adoleth. Hmm. Her mind seems strong. She won't have any use to us. She may break free. Destroy her. And Adoleth basically wants you to recklessly attack Nara. Alrighty. Completely under its control. Oh, it help if I put the wrong or the right icon. It doesn't want you to swing uh, with great weapon master, just regular <laughs> attacks. No, just regular one. Obviously very heavily armored. That's a miss. Wow. Yeah, 21 misses, Nara. That hits. And whoosh, the other left. Forces Ren to hit you for 12 slashing and 4 fire damage, Nara. 16 damage. And now. Sorry. Stand on one leg. <laughs> stand on one leg. Stay in that position for 6 seconds. <laughs> Meanwhile, this Abeleth is going to work on Norin with another tail attack. This guy here. Whoosh. Flicks back, bouncing off your armor. Miss. Roderick. Um, I'm going to command all three of our enemies to grovel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do that! <laughs> Alright, you tell them to grovel, Roderick. And, yep. uh... The Abolesh are not affected. They don't seem to understand a word you're saying. Oh, okay. When you speak the word they can't understand you it's only with this telepathic contact that they can and uh Rand, on the other hand he can he can understand you so he needs to make a wisdom saving throw i did oh yeah save against my see now you roll like a boss <laughs> <laughs> right 
no, <laughs> yeah, without that probing telepathy, the Apples don't actually seem to understand your spoken words. Okay. Just think it, Adam. This Avaleth is going to rush forward. It says. And it's going to start wailing on Than with its tentacles. Long leaf like appendages on the end of its tentacles start trying to slap you. First attack. It hits you for 15 bludgeoning damage. And. Uh, this mucus gets on you, Than. Make a constitution saving throw. Uh, constitution. You're fine. It's going to try and tentacle attack you again. It misses. It makes a third attack. Which completely misses. And that's the end of its turn. Just tries to flail at you with its tentacles. Then. Um, I'm going to try to, uh, I'm going to Sacred Flame rend. Ouch. So deck save for you, rend. And <laughs> you're hit for nine points of radiant damage. When the radiant damage starts to burn into you, there is a brief moment where you look around and you remember who your friends are. You remember how Than is burning you with a sacred flame and it makes you think of a good time. <laughs> you get another wisdom saving throw. But uh, he's still covered in slime. It doesn't break him out with a nine. You're mine, okay, um... man. And not your friend. Look, they sacred flame you. But they mean it in jest. <laughs> um. Jeez. Okay, I will. Uh, bonus action. Disengage and go back. About thirty feet. And in my turn. This Aboleth is going to attack Nara with a tail. Submit, it says, and it hits you for 14 bludgeoning damage. Nara. Alright, uh... Just gonna step up and, um... Uh... Taking out the trident. All yeah. reliable. You drive the trident into the outer left side. Three piercing puncture wounds appear in it. You do need to make a con right. save as well. You're good. Yeah, I'm going to put my unwavering mark on it. Okay, this mark. Uh, then, um, I'll, yeah, I'll just go for it again. Actually, you know, let's see, I moved 10, there's 20, there's 30. Um, I'll go for another try to attack on this one. Hit. Oh, this one is looking almost bloodied now. I just stab the trident into it. Okay, and I will put my unwavering mark on it as well. And um, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna take a regular old javelin out and try and get. Rand. <laughs> um, Can I get him? Which won't. Yeah. An 18 misses Rand. He uh, swings his flame tone. Hits your weapon to the side. 
his face is this big patch of mucus. <laughs> he still has his illustrious uh, beard, though. That's true. The beard is untouched. Uh, should have went. I should have went with the trident, but the trident does a little more damage. I didn't wanna. Um. Okay. Uh. That is gonna be it. All right. This Abaleth is going to inhale some psychic energy and repair itself a little Stop bit. Stop doing that. <gasps> There's more where this came from. <laughs> Thanks for the scum. Need a gift. The scum has been very what? useful to us. Lily. Well, slow did absolutely nothing, so uh, we'll try a big B's hand this time. Uh, which, which type? Of, which type of hand? Uh, we're gonna try the punching one. All right, punching this guy. Yeah, right, okay. right, right in front of him. Try to punch him. Let's get a punchy hand. Oh no, that misses. I think there, is, there should be a. Uh, it should be actually a spell template for the hand too already. I think I just like the other ones better. Oh, there we go. It is a. It's already in there. And yeah, twelve is gonna miss the Abola. Just uh, I mean, the fish just bounces straight off his rubbery flesh. Okay, uh, that's that's all the fish can do. This Abolef is going to. Try and enslave Norin. Warnova. Warnova. Norin, you need to make a wish. They can enslave day. multiple people? That's sick. Yeah, managed to up, to, up to three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they can, they can have <laughs> entire armies. Have left. Oh, wow. I mean, it's great. Yeah, they, they wanted. That's what they said. They would keep six of you. One of you need to be sacrificed. So that's two. So you may want to start thinking about. He should be sacrificed. All right. Well, we're working on sacrificing Rend here, so yeah. everybody keeps attacking me. All right. It it um enslaves you, Norin, and just says, "I'll leave you to have some fun." And then it's gonna swim up over here, provoking from Nara. That hits. He thrusts a spear to the side, poke it. For 10 points of damage. And at the same time, you get covered in the mucus, Nara. But it doesn't bother you because you're already. You've got the skull icon, which means nothing. Just ignore that. And it's coming in for some more fun at the back of the party. Thomas, you're up. Uh, Sab, is that one slowed or no? No, it, it succeeded the wisdom save and broke out of it. They are very strong minded creatures, these things. So it appears that Norn and Rend are charmed, right? Yeah. Yeah. They got slime face. All right, I'm going to acid splash the two of them. Lowest damage, damage cantrip, and I can hit two creatures within five feet. So. Okay. Each of you need to make deck saves. Oh. oh and. Well. Suck at those. If you fail Norin and you have Indomitable, it'll make you use your Indomitable as well. I'm all out of Indomitable. Alright, both of you fail. Uh, and my uh, It's oh, 17 because my deck saves are advantage. Yes, 17. If you're blessed, you actually yeah. succeed. Alright, Norin, you'll hit for 4 acid damage and you get to make a wisdom saving throw. Nope. But 13 does not succeed against Slime Face. <laughs> Yeah, taking acid doesn't help your wisdom saves. <laughs> no. That's when, how high is the ceiling in here? 20. Alright, fly up to the, or swim up to the roof. Okay. The uh, Aboleth, this guy, is going to tail swipe. 
fan. Miss. Nara. I am going to bonus action fighting spirit. And then I'm going to poke Ren. Rend is hit for three damage and Rend, you get a wisdom save. Three. Alright, uh, wisdom. And he snaps out of it. The first thing he Fine. realizes when he's no longer mind controlled by the Abolus is you've just hit him with a spear. And I'm gonna poke Norin. <laughs> hit? Norin. You take 10 damage and you get a wisdom save. The Abolus says, Stop that! <laughs> but Norin. The Abolus makes you say, One of us. One of us. <laughs> Move there and poke the Abolus. Hit. You stab it for nine damage. It's bloodied. Quite very close to being bloody, at least. This Abolith is going to tail swipe Thomas with a legendary action. And whoosh, it hits you for 16 bludgeoning. Hey, ow! Rodrick. Ah, <laughs> uh, Rend. Rendrick. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? <laughs> uh. <laughs> Well, reckless attack the Abolith. Wrong arm. Okay. <laughs> Hit. You slice into it and you lop off one of its tentacles. 23 damage. That's for mind controlling me again. Hit. Wrong one, buddy. Press and go. Right, you slash into it. Another 18 damage. It's looking pretty interesting. And yeah, that's I didn't crit. So this Abolet um, is going to tail slap Than. It misses. Roderick. I'm gonna use uh, some of those arrows, the plus two arrows, um, here, that we got, who knows how long ago. Can they be recovered later? If, if you don't hit something, then yeah. If, it, you know, if, if you, if you hit okay. something, if you hit something, then they lose their magic, but if you don't, they remain magical. Okay, sure. Um, so the disadvantage on attacks kind of works. And yes. yeah, so they stack with the bow as well, so it's like basically a plus three weapon. Alright, that is a hit. Yeah. So, uh, and I think I've got the plus damage on there. Yeah, it's got the. Right, I've um, put a attack modifier on, so it's got the damage on there. Oh, it's got there uh -huh. already? Okay, so yeah. 12. And you're hitting the Hunter's Mark guy, obviously. Yeah. Okay. One over there. And another one. Which looks like. This natural one, the uh, the spirit of the uh, the old and scout, which I can't even remember her name. It haunts you as you fire that longbow. <laughs> That's how important she was. <laughs> I can't even remember her name. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's uh, longbow plus one lady. Yeah. Don't lie, no one else can remember. Shalia her. or something. That's <laughs> definitely not it. <laughs> okay. Um. So, just a bad wait, memory. I think she's still alive somewhere, isn't she? She's like, you left. No, 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 she got. Yeah. No, 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 she shit. died. And then yeah. she yeah. Got, the, came or, back and the then she goblins died again. Were, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, she the died. Goblins in were the cooking her. Yeah. They were cooking her body. <laughs> Alright, this Abolith is uh, going to say. Uh, <sighs> fine. I understand. Not much about your mind, only that you choose to die. Rend. And then it attacks you, Rend. With a tentacle. You hit for seven bludgeoning, and right. you'll need a con save for disease. It's gonna tail swipe you again, Rend. 
or tentacle attack you. That's a miss. Third attack. Whoosh. You hit for another seven damage and you need another con save. And that's its turn. Does it have... 15? No, it looks like it's almost dead, right? I can't tell what it, the... It's not almost dead. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty badly injured, okay. though. It's injured. It's like yeah. orange-ish. All right, you're, uh, okay. you're good there, Ren. There's no skull icon either. <laughs> I think. Um, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to toll the dead on the injured one. Fails. 25 necrotic damage. Rotten wounds appear all over the Abolath's side. It's looking very injured. I will, uh, bonus action disengage. There. This Abolath is going to heal itself. It Inhale some psychic energy and repair some of its injuries. And then it shows some. Uh, it's a bit of a disgruntled sound. <laughs> when it finishes doing that, like something went wrong. No. Your order is to attack Rend. Wail on him. Unwavering mark as well. That is a hit. You hit Rend for three piercing damage, and Rend, you get a mark on you. 13 is a miss. You can stop now, Noren. He's not charmed. <laughs> 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 and it's a threat. And Rend, you take another five damage as Noren's completely covered in this slime, mindlessly attacking you. As one of the Aboleths. So towards. <laughs> the Aboleth here is also going to tail attack you, Rend. Back on more damage. Whoosh, hit for another five points. Well, that's not very nice. Lily. Alright, uh, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to turn the hand around and have it come over here and try to grab this guy. Okay. I rolled a one. Damn. And it grabs the Aboleth, it wrestles with it for a brief moment, but the Aboleth ends up escaping from its grip. Oh, this is going swimmingly. Well, uh, that was my bonus action. Okay. For an action, I'm going to throw a Ding Dong Doom at this guy back here. Swimmingly. <laughs> and fails. 23 damage, despite it repairing itself. It's seriously injured. Starts screeching and thrashing around everywhere. And that's it. Get back here. You will not escape me. The Aboleth chases you down, Lily. Swims after you. And it's going to reach out with its long tentacles to attack you. It hits. Oh, let's see. I'm gonna shield. Alright, the tentacle flings towards you, snaps backwards, bouncing off your shield. Stay still! It tries to get you again. The tentacle misses. Third attack. Break through the shield. Hitting you for eight bludgeoning damage. When the tentacle touches you, you need to make a constitution saving throw. The covenant slime. You resist. Thomas. I'll, uh, ten feet to here. Get straight diagonal at the aboleth and shoot a lightning bolt at it. The injured one. 
They're very slow Oops. to react, these Avalar. Let's roll on the Wild Magic Zone oh, Table 2, Thomas. Let's get some action in here. Ah, uh, Roderick. Two, three creatures with no. like a chain lightning. Feet. 30 feet. It just says up to. Yeah, you, it, you don't I mean... have to hit people with that. But you know, Norrin could use another save. That's true, you could always hit yeah, him. Yeah, you should shock him out of it. Besides, if he is unconscious, he can't hit us anymore. <laughs> Now's your chance. There's Use it on everyone else. Wild. Um, and I do the uh, uh, initial one first, because there is a chance maybe you just kill this one. All right, it's not going to die, but pff, very close. Thirty-five damage almost puts it down. So yeah, I'll choose the the two Aboleth for the up tooth. All right. It's like Three creatures. lightning. This one gets shocked and there's an explosion. Rips through its flesh and its limp body starts floating through the water. A big nice. trail of blood. The other Avalanche gets left. zapped and is a little bit injured now. Five feet of movement and I'm done. Alright, the Avalanche turns around and sees its body down and just turns towards Lily and says, There is still hope! And it's just going to tail swipe you, Lily. It misses. Nara. Uh, I will. Uh, I'm gonna dash. Which one charmed Norrin? It was the one in the hallway. That's the only one that charmed successfully twice. Yeah, it was this one. It charmed you and then it, it left you to contend with the others. The Abolesque going to try and attack Lily again. Using its tail. Miss. Ren. Alright, so... So, yeah, he's... Ten. And then I'm going to disengage from Nora. Fifteen. Twenty. I can go through Bigsby's hand? Yeah, it won't it won't miss. Yeah. Twenty-five, thirty. Thirty-five. And then it's friendly. Order. Unless you wanted to mess with you. Uh not this time. You can get it to tickle. Oh. <laughs> Scratch your back. Uh <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and. Oh no, I can't dash. I disengaged. All right, so that's all. The Abolith will take another swipe at Lily, and it misses. Swipe left. The Abolith says. Roderick. I'll move my hunter's mark over to that one, and uh, use the last arrow that I have on me, the of the good arrows. That's a hit. 12 damage. Hits the Aboleth. Nice. On its back. It's bloodied. Yep. Um, oh, that's not the one I meant to click. Can't reach that far with the quarter stuff. <laughs> Alright. Uh, that's uh, another hit. The Aboleth is yeah, it... losing a lot of blood. That is all. Fan. Um, I'm gonna cut myself and transfer some life onto Rend. Yay! <laughs> you gain 42 health. Sweet. I know it harms you, but I really like that spell. Because it's like 21 health for PD4. And I will, uh. Good. I'll move up. I'll move up. I'll 
I'll move up just a little bit. Just a little. Are you in the wall? Oh, never mind. I just can't see you from here. A little more. There we go. And help action on that thing. Okay. And then end my turn. Now we're in the order is to uh, dispose of that guy, whatever his name is. <laughs> Use your special throwing abilities. <laughs> Javelins. <laughs> Your specialization. <laughs> Second job Ow. hits that. For nine PSA. Third javelin misses that. Norin is just yeah. Like a zombie covered in slime. Being bent to the aboleth. Every whim. Lily. Alright, uh bonus action. I'm gonna come over here and I guess I'll just try to punch him. It has advantage. From some unknown source. Hit. Didn't even need it. The big beast hand comes over and poof, just punches the Avalet straight on his back. Sorry. Technically it did need it, didn't it? Doesn't it have disadvantage underwater? <laughs> not spell. It's, it's a, a spell. It's a melee spell attack, not a melee um, weapon yeah, attack. Spells are actually not restricted underwater. Anyway, it's... You help them. It's it's crushed for seventeen. I gotta make my <laughs> argument. <laughs> uh, for my action, I'm gonna put up a mirror image. Oh no! This now there's uh, ten of you, and I'm all out of enslavements. Can you wait three days? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I set a timer. All right, the Aboleth is looking around a little bit panicky now, as unfathomable as they make themselves out to be. It's actually looking a little bit mortal now. No deal. There's still hope. There's still hope. <laughs> the baby. The baby will protect me. And the Aboleth is going to start running for the pet. It's going to dart up and over the top of Rend and Nara, provoking opportunity attack. B lines it for the pet with a dash action. You guys both hit as you swing upwards. You slash your weapons through the underbelly of the Aboleth. The Aboleth takes 16 damage from Ren, 9 damage from Nara. 25 damage leaves that Aboleth seriously injured as it feebly attempts to escape to the pit. Thomas. I'm going to. up here and shoot another lightning bolt except I'll do it from the front page this time so it rolls down another lightning bolt <laughs> courses into the aboleth hitting it for 37 lightning damage leaving it on the brink of death And I'll quicken a ray of frost. Bonus section. Crit. Nice. And, uh, Jeez. Well, this owl I thought it might make it to the pit, but it was horribly mistaken. Jagged shard of ice stabs straight through its eye socket, and it just stops, motionless in the water. A gentle current bringing it down onto the ground. It's completely unmoving and unflinching. Nice. And Good draw, uh, Thomas. Yeah, it's kind of been drawn a little bit closer to that pit. All of a sudden, a massive tentacle 
30 feet long it extends out of the hole grabs the Abolus body and <laughs> drags it down into the pit <laughs> okay watch for burp bubbles to come up Tim we never saw that walk away <laughs> it's, it's, it's not an abolith. Let's I'm, go. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not telling anyone what I saw. <laughs> good job, guys. That was uh, that was a good fight. Don't even think about it, Roderick. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't know what you're measuring there, but get, put your measuring tape away. <laughs> Aaron, you're back to normal, and you don't really have much of a recollection as to what happened. It's a little bit of a blur for you. Anybody Ren, appear to have that? Ren. Yeah, Ren, you need to make another con save as well because you did merely attack it one more time. Alright, question is, do Kraken speak common? Can I command a Kraken? <laughs> I'd go around and collect javelins. Hey, you go and pull one out of Than and a couple more on the ground. I'll get my other arrow. That missed. No one has uh, any strange afflictions that you can tell Thomas no one's like slam, slam boy or anything like that slam boy. Like one minute spells will go down as you guys recover from that fight and uh, let's take a 10 minute break now too alright All right. Um, we'll see what you guys want to do with this pet when we get back see you guys back shortly
Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. How is everyone? Slimy. Excellent. <laughs> okay, so uh, both Avalefs. Well, you've killed three Avalefs. And uh, they're all dead, and as you killed that final one, it was kind of getting close to that pit. A large tentacle reached out, 30 foot long, snatched it straight up. The tentacle is very big as well. It grasps the apple left, curling around it like a snack, dragged it into the depth of this pit. Well, think. let's put a let's put a pin in that. What's in these side chambers? <laughs> <laughs> let's do a little exploring. Yeah. Darn. <laughs> Damn. Good segue. Thomas, as you guys move down into this ruined spy, look up and you see that most of the roof is gone, but then you just hit with an explosion. There's a glyph on the ground here. Ooh. Explosive rooms. Oh. And so it would I would I would have went over that first then I guess. Yeah, it hits it hits Naran Than and Thomas. It explodes out in a ten foot radius. And uh it just zaps you guys. You don't get any saving throw for it as well, it electrocutes you. And uh, you each take 23 points of lightning damage. I have the ring of lightning resistance, so. Cut that down to 11. And. Uh, Absorb elements, too. Thank okay. you. You bring it down to 11 as well, Thomas. And. Uh, I'll just take it in the face. <laughs> you see a, a blue glyph burnt into the ground. Like it glows bright blue. It unleashes the lightning now it's burnt happy with ground. myself for not noticing that glyph well you did but not until it was too late if you'd gone in first you would have last time I followed Norn anywhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah you have to pick up but unfortunately uh, it was too late you got shot as you look in around this area um the roof is gone from the belfry, and this spire is up thrust. Portions of the walls and their arched windows still remain, and there is a seaweed tangled staircase ascending into what looks like the open air. I guess there's a little bit of light, it's like a bit of a greenish light filtering into this room as well. You can tell that this leads outside. There's a set of stairs that lead upwards in a, like, square formation. Maybe we should all group up and go into the other doorway at the same time. <laughs> okay, you group up and go into the other doorway at the same time. You already said it now, so it's done. <laughs> it's done yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, some sort of protective ward. Wonder why that ward's there. Must be something in here. Keep people coming in from the surface. Yeah, that, that that was my first thought. There is another side entrance over here. I feel like this might have been a vestry for the priests to put on their clerical robes or whatnot. And now it just it looks out into the ocean. You can clearly see fish swimming around and barnacle encrusted detritus mostly lit up it's built I'll, it's pretty dirty yeah Still I'll dark. take a look on this side to see if I can see any glyphs or any traps make a perception check then I'll uh, guidance myself too you've got Ren holding up his flaming great sword and you can clearly see the tracery of a glyph it's about 10 foot square and it covers 
the floor. Left as well. Step away. You still see these runes throbbing. Whoa. 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 Undulating, breathing with the light. Whoa. Take a pop to these healing potions. Is it worth trying to take a short rest? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in another country. <laughs> maybe we could, uh, say and take a short rest. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Hecaton's not in there. If he is, then we need to go send our condolences to the, his daughter. <laughs> Either. I mean, if we want to check out that side room, if we've got a way to dispel it, that might be good. I don't know if it's worth it or not, but other than that, I'm kind of not in favor of messing with the Kraken baby. Yeah, I think it's contained in that magical circle. <laughs> is it? It is at the moment. Ren's usually the expert <laughs> on these things. So. Exactly. Hmm. We killed the ones that was feeding it. Okay. Ren, go kill it real quick. I'm out of rages, otherwise I would. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so it seems like maybe we should just ex explore the size since we already detonated the... Uh traps it goes up to the top right yeah it looks like this is okay. like a bell tower this is the spire and uh you can see light filtering in a bit of a emerald well, light filtering in from above i'm not satisfied till i check it all out to see if there's any hidden doors or anything you can make so a perception possible. check i'll it's myself judging from the layout um in terms of secret doors you feel like it should probably just lead outside you examine the walls, you can see like broken panes of stained glass window and all the bits of the raft that's like fallen down here, splintered wood. There's nothing of interest. Everything, uh, you know, all the wood is like the floorboards are, are very soft and mushy from being waterlogged. Um, a way out I wanna though, try, if you're looking for a way uh, out. I want to try and throw a javelin like in the middle of that cir that other circle, see if no, that's a horribly bad idea. <laughs> Send one of your lions in there, Roderick. <laughs> then they can at least no. eat it. If you want to there attack a space, you can run. you can point to a space and make an attack roll. Hold on, let me back up. He's just gonna piss it off. I'm just, I'm just I'm hitting this thing. I'm not going for the. Oh, I thought you, I thought you were going for the crack. Oh, yeah, I, I totally, the... I totally misread that. How would I go for the crack? <laughs> Did anyone not think that that's what Norm was doing? No, I fully understood he was going for the glyph. I had, uh, I did too. That's why I was saying it was. That's why I was saying it was a bad <laughs> idea. As you're going why, for why Ren, so Ren becomes you know, the fucking He-Man Tiger. What was his name? When he has no rage, he becomes Cringer. When he's like scared. As you're going to do that, those versions Ar um, Arcane will um will tell you there's a good chance that that won't trigger the glyph. But it could. Anyway, you, you do we feel like we need to go roll. in there? You don't need an attack roll okay. for that, Norrin. And uh, yeah, your javelin. I'll swing a javelin over there. It, it it sticks into Help. the soft wooden floorboards, but it doesn't trigger it. Oh, it's fine. You should go happens? get your javelin. How bad do we want to try to get in there? Like on a scale of one to ten. On a scale of one to ten gold, I say ten gold for a um familiar. Does that work? A what? See again? A familiar. You could attempt to dispel it without the spell magic. First, you'd need a intelligence investigation check to figure out the nodes on the glyph, and then you need an arcana check to try and, if it's possible, trace your finger into the correct nodes and disable it. Okay, that's not my realm, so I'm out. Good luck. There's also these runes as well. You could try that on. That's a... 
<laughs> Should I just approach then? I'll just no, take my bait and uh... Lily might have a chance at that Arcana thing. Careful, Nara. Don't get too close to that hole. Yeah, because it pulled the um Adeleth from pretty far. Speak speaking of this this pit though, um yeah. These new these runes are noticeable and you could try and study them from a safe distance and make an arcana check to determine their purpose. Go, Lily. Alright, I'll give it a try. Guidance on Lily. Okay. Uh, guidance won't work because it actually takes okay. a few minutes. So I'm concentrating on guidance. If it was less than a minute, it would work. But... Just cast it at the last second. No, I'll take, it. I'll take my best stab <laughs> at it. Alright, you carefully examine the glyph for a few minutes, Lily, and you can tell what its function is. The magical conduit. The magic acts as a beacon for negative emotional energy generated within five miles of it. It draws from the wisps of all such energy, from the dismal environment, which no place better than the styes. They are channeled through this unholy glyph, which uh, is also, it has a symbolism of Therisda. And uh, damp has given you a strong, a very, very strong feeling of wanting to destroy this glyph. In fact, that's actually Damper's whole purpose, is to slay cultists of Therisden. And uh, there's more. So not only does it feed on the negative emotion in a five mile radius, and the glyph uh, channels this energy and it accelerates the Kraken's growth, fuels its hostility. Normally a, a beast like this would take decades to reach maturity. This is probably going to take months, maybe even weeks. Yeah, so we kind of got to do something about that. Do yeah. we though? Do we Damper really? Damper communicate. Damper can speak. Damper, Damper does not speak very much because it only really cares about elemental evil. But uh, yeah, it is a crusader. So uh, the, the Damper urges you to destroy the Kraken, Lily. Uh, can I ask Damper how we could uh, break this rune around it? Damper doesn't know. Damper's uh, not really that smart. To tell you the truth, like it doesn't really have a, a great deal of knowledge in the arcane. But uh, Damper asks you to destroy the Kraken. Um, does does Lily pick up on any? Is it possible to get destroy that rune with your? Yes, dispel magic, physically destroying the sigils. Lily could tell you. And or something like if, a um, like a hallow, hallow spell. Would destroying the ruin release the kraken? Oh, this isn't <laughs> this isn't a a warding rune. This isn't keeping it trapped or anything like that. It's feeding it. It's just attracting things so it can be fed. Is that... Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing it's, preventing the kraken from feeding it negative energy coming out of that hole. It, so really what we what we should do is go to town, throw a big party so that all the negative energy is gone and everybody feels good, and it'll slow this thing down. So firstly, oh, God, Lily, how do you respond to your sentient magic item? I told them I'm trying to figure out how. Dampus tells you to summon your allies and lay waste to it. Then let's take a rest in this room and uh, come back come tomorrow. And kill the kraken. <laughs> tomorrow. <Short> rest. Tomorrow. <laughs> oh right, I forgot. Cringer. So what exactly. do you say, Lily? Because uh, if there is a conflict, I'm working on. The I'm working item, on talking these guys into it. If there is a conflict, the item will make a demand. 
and then uh, there'll be a contested ability check. I'm not leaving yet. Well, we're just gonna collect our resources and then kill it. Prepare for battle. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Short rest, then go after it. Or long rest, rent needs. <laughs> for the fourth time. I don't know that we can wait for a long rest. Why not? I said it's going to be weeks. Possibly. Well, it total time is going to be weeks. It might have already been. It could have already been some weeks, and like there's also no Avalis containing it anymore, because they were the ones controlling it. So I suppose. Mm. I thought it was the other way around. Yeah, well, it's a bit of both. Well, if, it, if it's still getting fed by this thing, it will probably stay, I would guess. Therizia but... was the Avalos master, and they were trying to use the crack into their own ends. It, it could be ready to break out, or ready to leave at any moment. We don't know how close Yeah, it and is. its 30-foot yeah. tentacle did just shoot out, so... No, oh, it seems big. Yeah. We're not really say... in the best shape to attack something huge right now. True. We need to rest and then come back. How many spells Damper do you guys really have left? Wants well, Damper, really Damper wants, wants us to die? He wants the Kraken to die. I'd be fine with yeah, the rest. Yeah, but the Kraken won't die. That's the Damper problem. Damper says, For... uh, I don't want anyone to die. I want you to destroy it. There we promise no we'll destroy it. Meaning. Just, we, we cannot need to... leave now. There may be others that will come and claim it. Or perhaps it is matured enough now that it seeks to escape. I will not leave this temple while it remains. Yeah. Let's try to rest but an only, hour. Only Lily, only Lily can give the weapon an answer. Because it's your achievement. Yeah, I'm, I'm mostly oh, I just thought, I thought it can speak. to the rest you said of the it can speak. You said it can speak. But only to Lily? It only has power over Lily. It doesn't have power over anyone Oh, okay. Else. Sorry, I thought it was if you're attuned to a sentient story. magic item, it's able to take you over. It can charm you and yeah. take over your, your character. So we're at least taking a short rest, though, right? <laughs> yeah, let's take a short rest and then kill this Kraken, I guess. Since the sword is... Alright, we're going to roll initiative. When you guys say that you're going to rest to gain power to defeat the Kraken, that's when it knows that you guys are weak and emerges to attack. What's the cutest crack I've ever seen? It doesn't hesitate <laughs> to take advantage of you guys in a weakened state. Aha, we lured it into our trap when we're at our strongest. So it can understand us. Alright, it, it emerges <sighs> from this pit. And yeah, it must have been quite close to the top, or it has some sort of broad telepathic connection. Either way, it. Uh, I mean, it's immature, but monstrous to behold. It has oily, dark green flesh, 30 foot long arms, and uh, a ravenous mouth lined with hundreds of dagger-like teeth. It has enormous eyes surrounded by an aura of red energy, the mark of power channeled into it. And the glyph around it is also branded into the Kraken's head, as you can see here. A blue-black mark resembling the spiral sign of Therisden. The flesh is surrounded by ulcers and sores. As if this is the source of where the energy is channeled into it. And, uh, yeah, it just starts... It doesn't, like, say anything. It just emerges and it starts reaching out with its monstrous tentacles to take initiative and strike first. Rend, you're up first. Awesome. How far is that? Can you put the grid back on for me? Yeah. Just so I know. These tiles Thanks. are confusing as well. You can probably throw that javelin that's um, stuck in your leg. <laughs> Still there. Uh, Forty. Alright. Oh, one more. And 
I rage. Uh, and it, like, attacked from 30 feet away when it grabbed that abolith? It seems to have, yeah, long tentacles, yeah. 30 feet long. You have freedom of movement, or whatever it's called. Yeah, I mean, I went I went 40. Wait, didn't I? <laughs> I got 30, 35, 40. Maybe I'm just not counting right, because I was right in front of you, wasn't I? Uh, you uh, move, actually, you're you right move behind 40 me. feet. Yeah. Actually, if you, oh, I, I, if you um, okay. select your token yeah. and press X, it'll actually show you the last move that you did. Really? Oh, right, cool. Yeah. Oh, that is awesome. <clears throat> All right, uh, then I'm going to take the dodge action. Okay. All right, it's going to use three legendary actions, and it's going to flood... The entire temple. Now I'm I'm uh, just so you know I'm not raging. I said uh, I don't have any rages oh, left. Sorry, I thought you were keeping one, and you're bluffing before. No. All right, nope. the the entire temple is now filled with a black ink. Let me just measure. Actually, there might be a little bit of room. Yeah, there is. Most of the temple is filled with black ink. I'll just use this fog, but um, basically everything is now heavily obscured and it's choking you guys when you try to breathe in and you're getting poisoned and if you end your turn in it, you'll take poison damage. Norin, so it just ejects ink into the an ink cloud. And you said it's heavily obscured? Yeah, so everything is now heavily obscured, so you can't see in it. Alright. That's full movement. Um, I will... Uh, I'll take the dodge action, too. For now. Okay. Um, You're dodging, you're looking around, and... That's not helping you, because you can't see anything. Oh, yeah, shit. I didn't even think about that. Well, too late now. You can change your move if you want, but if you can't see something, you can't dodge against it. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, I mean, I would just blindly throw javelins at it then, if that's the case. Okay. I will be at disadvantage. Of course. Hit. You hear the javelins stick into it. Hit. And three. Man. Alright, as you end your turn, Norin, make a con save against poison. You have advantage from your antitoxin. And, uh... You take nine poison damage. Then Um Hmm I will uh Let's go with some potions Maybe? No I'm gonna move 10, 20, 30 Bonus action, dash Come up to here, um, <clears throat> and I will cast freedom of movement on Nara. Okay. Water does not hinder you anymore, Nara. And that was ten. 20, 30 in my turn. You're dashing, I guess. I did bonus action dash okay. to get to Nara because I used 30 and yeah, I needed 40 to get to her. Make a constitution save for ending your turn in the ink then. Constitution. You have advantage so because of the antitoxin. It's poison. 
You take seven points of poison damage on a successful save. Roderick. I can't see it, so I can't move my hunter's mark, correct? Uh, I think so. I'm pretty yeah, sure probably. that requires sight. I think it's... Um... Yeah, requires sight. Uh, take to make... You can use a bonus action on a subsequent turn to mark a new creature. But to cast it, you have to be able to see it, so... Yeah, you need to be able to see it. Yeah, um, so I will just blindly uh, shoot it with some arrows. Hit. Yeah. I'll try to. Nice. That's another hit. And I'll use my last magic arrow with the dread ambusher. Hit. Yeah. You're not seeing any damage or anything like that, but you're hoping that you hit. Not seeing anything. Um, that is all. Thomas. Um. All right, I'm gonna open the genie bottle and tell it defeat this creature and you're free. All right. Then we're gonna have to. Do you. Unleash the Afridi again. <laughs> I mean, it's just you asshole. <laughs> if I can find him, there he is. Alright, so, um, how far does he go when you summon him? Um, let's see what it's at. Within 30 feet. So, where do you want to put him? 30 feet closer to. The Kraken. Were you moving and then doing it or doing it? Yeah. Okay. I'll move right there and then do it. So. Alright. At the well, at the end of your turn, he will appear within thirty feet of you. Oh, I need a concept, don't I? Oh yeah, you need one there, Roderick. Everyone will need to make that at the end of their turns. Alright. Roderick, you take uh, five poison damage. Not a points, no quickening anything. No concept. The Freddy appears at the end of your turn. Thomas, you take 14 poison damage. The Freddy says, What Kraken? I see nothing. What are you talking about? <laughs> Kraken the ground. I hear something really big. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? That's what I'm talking about. How, How did I get healed? Where am I? What is the meaning of my existence? <laughs> to kill Krakens. Yeah. And I thought I hit it. There we go, sorry. The juvenile Kraken is going to get Kraken on its attacks. It is going to strike. Dan. Actually, no, not Dan. Yeah, it's going to strike Dan with a bolt of lightning first. It's going to shoot one at you. And Dan, you need to make oh. a dexterity saving throw. Just casually throws a bolt of lightning. Yeah. Okay. Magically creates one. And pff, it hits you for 13 points of lightning damage there. It's going to reach out and try and grab the Afriti. And it has advantage. It doesn't need to see like you guys. And uh, the Afriti just says, I regret everything! Ah! And you're getting <laughs> crushed. And he is grappled and restrained. And it's going to uh, just keep him uh, at a good distance and start swimming around. And it's going to move in a little bit closer. It's going to reach out with a long tentacle at Nara at advantage. And whoosh, a tentacle wraps around you, Nara. You take 13 bludgeoning damage and you become grappled and restrained. 
and then uh, it's going to uh, move in a little bit closer and just attach its face to Nora and try to bite him. Oh, wait, one, two, yeah. I mean, that was three attacks. That's it's done. That's good because it was probably going to crit me. <laughs> It'll do that very soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting it's preparing itself to do that and that ink cloud has gone savoring uh, moment the moment it goes away at the end of the kraken's turn lily lord i'm going to cast uh slow as you move See back the kraken will opportunity attack you okay it hits you you're grappled and while you're grappled, you're restrained. And you take 13 bludgeoning damage. How many tentacles does this Kraken have? 10. How many? It's got ah. quite the reach, too. How many legs does an octopus have? Tentacles. Oh, anyway. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that'd be so, true yeah. if it was a squid. But... It has 30 foot long tentacles. 30 foot long tentacles. That was mentioned Whoa. about five times. And it grabs you. Record in its tentacles. Yes, I suppose that it was. Uh, hmm, in that case. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm still going to try it. I'll try to slow him. I cast slow on the juvenile pack. And it seems very resilient. Strong mind. It succeeds. At the end of your turn, Lily, the Kraken is going to attack Rend. Actually, you know, you're, you're dodging Rend. It's not going to go for you. It's going to go for Rodrick. <laughs> And it sees that you're a hard target to hit. This thing is you know, very intelligent. It grabs you, Roderick. You're grappled and restrained. And you take 17 bludgeoning damage. Nara. Oh, there goes my hand's mark. Uh, I'm going to use five feet of my movement and freedom to get out of that grapple. You'll see. And I'm going to... Bonus action, second win. Wow, you still had that? <laughs> Norn used that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> God, someone's got some resources left. And then she's gonna charge forward and attack. That hits. You pierce the spear into the side of this hulking creature. Great damage. You hit it again. Another eight damage. Ten is a miss. A random tentacle flicks back and knocks your spear backwards. It's going to throw the Afriti across the room. Oh. It's just like got everyone in okay. the, these long tentacles are extending out everywhere. One onto Lily, one onto Roderick, one onto the Afridi. I had one on Nara. And then it just picks the Afridi up and yeet, it says telepathically. <laughs> what did it say? Yeet. <laughs> and it gets thrown 40 feet in uh, due west and it smashes into the wall. It takes 40 feet of damage, strikes the wall, takes 11 bludgeoning damage, and is... It just hit, it hits the wall. And uh, it doesn't let go of the Afridi as well. It's still within the Juvenile Kraken's reach. So it just 
throws it, you know, flings him across the wall, slams him into it. The Afridi just says, uh, Thomas, this is shit. I was just hanging out in the city of brass, smoking some hookahs, and now you bring me here. I can't even speak either. <laughs> and it's gonna just start throwing fireballs at the Kraken. First one misses. Second one hits. A little ball of fire slams into the Kraken for nine damage. Rend. All right, run up here, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, great weapon master and reckless attack this guy. Twelve Shit. misses. Right, let's try that again. It's not very quick, but it's got a strong Whoa. flash and twenty-three a crit. I mean, it just cut straight through it. 35 slashing damage. 8 fire damage. And then, uh, so a, a big blistering <laughs> wound into its side. Alright, and then uh, use my bonus attack since I. 16 hits gets through its, oh. its armor. And you slash into it for 30 damage. It's. Uh, Almost bloody. It's got a couple of decent injuries on it now. Yeah, I'm sure I will too in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's it. Norman. Alright. Uh, start poking it with the trident. Which one? Hit. You pierce straight into its side. Ink spills out from the injuries. Unwavering mark on it. I'm probably going to regret that. Um, there's a second. You stab into it again. More ink spills out. And it's bloodied now. And a third. Thirteen misses. The trident just bounces off of it. Doesn't pierce into its flesh at all. Then. Um, <clears throat> I guess I'll bonus action disengage. So I can get some distance. Uh, to here. <laughs> and I will, uh. think I'll just try to drink a. healing potion, I guess. I'll do greater. A greater. Let's see what I got here. Those tentacles are creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll do a greater. I got one. And... I wish I'd taken disarming strike. <laughs> so you could hit someone and make it drop them. Alright, uh, Roderick. It's um, tentacles for you. Oh wow. Just what I always wanted. <laughs> um, so I've got him right where I want him now. I will cast Hunter's Mark on it again. And shoot. Hunter's Mark goes on, and that's a direct hit. It's another hit. The arrow squelches into the Kraken's side. Little lines of, of ink are just spilling out everywhere. Thanks for holding me still. It was slippery the ground. <laughs> it's looking like a little bit of a pincushion with all these piercing weapons, causing all this ink to spray out from these little holes. Thomas. Mm. I'm just going to uh, shoot a ray of frost in it. Direct hit. And its tentacles are covered in rime. 20 points of cold damage. It's looking very injured. And it lets out a bit of a screech. 
Ah! It says it. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. It should have a beak. Uh, it's going to wrap this tentacle around Ren. It starts to crush you. Take 19 bludgeoning damage. Grappled and restrained. But don't worry. It's going to let you go, Ren. Cool. It's going to bite you and put you in its mouth. In you go. Uh, <laughs> it I opens up its mouth and it stuffs you into its its mouth, Ren. You take oh, 23 um, piercing damage. Oh, wait. He's restrained. Never mind. All right. You're swallowed now. And the grapple ends. So you're not grappled anymore. Well, there's that. You're now you're just <laughs> blinded, restrained. You can't see outside and you're getting dissolved by stomach acids. No big deal. Yeah, it's fine. And uh, you'll take acid damage at the start of the Kraken's turn. The best you can do is try and cut your way out. But at least you're not grappled anymore. And uh, it's got one more attack uh, left. Seb, the freedom of movement, doesn't it make him immune to restraint? Or no? No. I, I can use five feet of movement to escape it. If it was magical, he couldn't. It's not magical, though. It's just a thing. Oh. You can escape no, even... it with five feet of movement. Yeah. But yeah, magical effects can't reduce your speed or cause you to be restrained. It's, it's a mundane effect. Gotcha. And this thing is just going crazy, and it's going to just uh, send a bolt of lightning, very, very frightening, at Thomas. Thomas, make a dexterity save. <laughs> lightning. Hello, <strike. Leo. laughs> It's a direct I'll, hit. And I'll absorb elements. All right, you reduce nope, the damage nope, down to nope. 11. Roll on the wild magic side of the table, Thomas. Come on, let's get something big. All right, mamma mia, mamma mia, Mr. It. Kraken, let me go. Oh, Son of oh a no, bitch. that's one of the, worst, the one. worst one. <laughs> we all died one time because you got that. I swear. All right, uh, at least your wizard didn't you fall asleep. Pink bubbles come out of your mouth. We you do absorb that down to eleven lightning damage. And the Kraken, everyone that it has grapple is just pinning them kind of to the ground commanding all of its tentacles in many different areas. Lily. Uh, Lily does not think she'll fare well if she goes the way Rend went. So she's going to uh, dimension door herself out of there. And into the mouth? Yeah, after Rend. Yeah. Just go in there, just get it over with. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm going there anyway. Up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fucking speed this fight up a little bit. Let's go. Uh, let's yeah, see. Anyway, you just... within 500 Oop. feet. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going far. I just five, five back feet up. back. <laughs> I just wanted to back up. All right, you phase out of its grip, reappearing <laughs> near the entrance. This tunnel. I'm willing to do it. Yeah. Uh. A minute. Let's see, that's that's an action. I don't have anything else. I think that's all I'm able to do. All right, the juvenile kraken expelled this ink cloud again. Everything once again becomes heavily obscured. Fills the the area. It actually doesn't go like all the way to the back. It's kind of from where Lily is. To kind of where the kraken is so there is a, an area over here that's not ink anyway it covers all of you guys nara you're up uh is, is it still here it's it's within five feet of you it's in this space do you see it no i mean the uh the cloud it spit out oh the cloud uh no it ends like kind of pretty much uh let me see. I'll tell you the exact square. It's from Lily to the Kraken. Right, I'm gonna move. I can move through this thing's space, right? Yeah. All right, you come out from behind it. Uh, you're not in the ink, but it still it is. So you can't see it. 
but you're not in the you're not getting poison. I'm uh <clears throat> I'm gonna bonus action fighting spirit. Alright. You negate the disadvantage of the fighting spirit. And I'm going to drop the spear, draw my long sword, and attack it three times. Alrighty. You'll spit out my giant dwarf friend. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I didn't get it till you left. That hits. Whisk. Eleven damage. Whisk. You hit it again for thirteen. And you hit it again for twelve. And it starts to regurgitate. Ew. But it sucks <laughs> Ren back in. <laughs> the Afraidy just says, uh, I'm going to make it my goal to hunt you down when I am free from you, Thomas, for the torture you have brung upon me. And starts hurling flames at the Kraken. Go to tell him his freedom's within reach, but it just pink bubbles come out. <laughs> Both hit. Um, yeah, two direct hits. Finally, I did something useful. In all three times you've summoned me. <laughs> Rend. You, right. you just feel these, like, soft, squishy bits of flesh vortexing you apart, and then you're swimming around in, like, a big... in its gullet full of stomach acid. There's, cool. uh, some... Other skeletons in there hanging out with you. It's like a jacuzzi. Oh. Rage your way over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm. A, 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 we'll go ahead and reckless attack and great web master. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Right, you will be at disadvantage as well. You can't really move too much. So like a regular attack. Eleven misses. Twenty-two hits. Come on. Alright, you guys see the tip of Ren's blade kind of poke out the side of the Kraken. There's not enough to make it regurgitate. He lives. <laughs> you Dig my way out. Like, you poke your head out and say, oh, away for I think it's pregnant. <laughs> Ren pokes his head out and sees everyone. <laughs> he just sees ink, I guess. Hello. <laughs> Norin. Um and do much like Nora did and move through uh, to get out of the out of the ink you are that's still in can, it there that's as far as I can move that sucks you're on the threshold of it well shit oh well um, it hurt one of my compadres while it was marked so I'm gonna bonus action attack at first I normally have advantage with this attack, so I have to cancel it out. Regular right. attack. Ah. Fifteen is not going to do it. Gotta be kidding me. Almost man. pierces through its flesh. Not quite. Nineteen hit. Yeah, this one doesn't have a nice extra damage on top of it though. Rand, you have to like kind of jump back because three pronged trident head <laughs> almost impales you from inside the kraken. Number two. And that hits. And you stab it again. And uh, there's little gaps where it's kind of in and out the ink. And you see your end just like inside the Kraken's stomach. And number three. That hits. And you poke it again. It lets out a horrific scrape. Uh, and you just feel a cold blood wash over you no idea how it's looking. You do need to make a con save as well. You resist, and you take five poison damage. Man. Um, you said that the ink cloud, uh, I'm gonna retreat. Bonus action, dash. And I will go, my full movement, right? Since I can Yeah, if you dash in, you're seven. going. Six squares, okay, so, seven squares. Okay, and then so I will go to here. Right, you, Can you just feel this guy bump past? Am I out of the ink? 
You are out of it. And I will, uh... You look back into the temple and you just see pitch black. Alrighty. <clears throat> I will, um... Let's see here. Yeah, I'll just use one on my, uh... Actually, can I use a scroll under underwater? Yeah. Alright, I'll use one of my, uh... One of my healing scrolls. I'll just do... You just have to use yeah. it really quickly before it gets wet. Okay, <laughs> I'll do one of my cure wound scrolls. I'll use one up, and uh, I'll just cast it, and that will be my turn. Okay, Roderick. Um, I will shoot it. Yes. Attempt to shoot it. Miss. The arrow bounces off of its head. That is all. You'll need a con save. No, I'm good. <laughs> you will need one for the. I clicked it! <laughs> okay. <laughs> you are good. You take two damage. It's gonna break my concentration, I betcha. Yeah, I <laughs> <You> knew it. <laughs> Oh, Alright, I'm gonna drink a greater healing. Alright, the healing potion. You drink it down, and the healing potion is now filled full of pink bubbles. And then I'll make a concept. You resist the poison, and you take six points of damage. Oh no, the Kraken is still alive. So first thing that happens is, Rand, you take 20 points of stomach acid damage. And you guys see, well you hear Rand, his head poke back into the Kraken. But no, he's still just swimming around in there. <laughs> The Kraken, That's what you call it. The Kraken's gonna just, uh... Say, uh... Yeet! And he's gonna yeet Roderick. Oh no. Where to? You're gonna go... Southwest. So Is gonna... he gonna Kobe me into the wall? <laughs> you're, gonna... <laughs> you're gonna hit the wall. He's just gonna fling you across okay. the room and... Slam you into that wall. Uh, that's a 20 foot slam. So you take 7 bludgeoning damage. It's going to try and wrap its slimy tentacles around Nara. It has advantage. And Nara, it crushes you for 19 bludgeoning damage. You're grappled and restrained. And then it tries to pop you in its mouth. And it crit bites you for 38 um, piercing it, damage. It's still marked by me. So, so it doesn't have advantage. Right. So it, you actually don't go in its mouth, Nara. Something prevents it. There's a, a bit of a force preventing it from you going in there. So you just grapple and restrain. And that's it. Too. It's going to... um. Swim away from you, Norin. Let me just remove this ink cloud because everyone's going to be kind of going with it. Uh, you'll just need to move back in a second, Norin, but it's going to swim like this way. Um, does it do that before the fog is lifted? No, it, it the fog doesn't go away to the end of its turn. I just moved it so I could. Move every okay. Second. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. I mean, it looks like it's gonna just grab people and maybe even try and make a escape. But the fog is gone. Was it meant to take me as well? Did you go? Oh uh, no, I was. Oh, yeah, you had gone. Uh, it moved. It'll it'll 
put you about there. Okay. Was a fool Lily. to not eat Naura. All right. Uh, I think Lily's going to try to put it in a mental prison. Mental prison. That is the weakest goddamn roll. Oh. Look at that roll for Christ. Yeah, that's sad. That's a big spell. But wow. I you attempt to find it with an illusory cell that only it perceives. It makes an intelligent saving throw. I cannot believe I rolled that. Uh, it's a successful save, so it takes 5 to 10 psychic damage and the spell ends. So it takes 13 psychic damage. Luckily, it doesn't even have that many hit points left, so its eyeballs explode <laughs> with blood. <laughs> nice! You got perfect me. Uh, perfect yeah. roll yeah. there, Lily. You explode its head. That's all you needed. And then the Afraidy says, No! Be free! Oh, I can't see it. And you guys got it. <laughs> Dampa says, thank you, Lily. You're very welcome. As bad as I thought it was going to be. It still sucked, but... Oh, I don't ask for much. But when I do, <laughs> it's, see if... it's kill a cracker. See if Damper wants to cut Rend out. Yeah, Nara will help with that, getting Rend out, too. Yeah, Rend is just still raging and just cuts his way out and all the tentacles come loose around. You look great, Ren. Afridi, before you go, walk over there. <laughs> You're not the boss of me. No one's the boss of me. <laughs> Except I for Thomas. I actually told him that anyway. Thomas is the boss of me. <laughs> when I get my voice back, I'll tell him, served us well, be free. <laughs> really? You will free me? Yes, you are free. Boss Thank music. You. Thank you, Al, he says, and then he flies off. <laughs> Wait, where am I going? I don't look. <laughs> Plane or shift away or something. You're good. Okay. Does he need a one-break? <laughs> Bye! <laughs> okay. <laughs> he just says, later. <laughs> Gone. And Nara's gonna go pick up that spear she dropped too. Now, what do we do about this ruin? Uh, sponge it. I have my mason's tools. I can start destroying the rocks. It'll take a while. Hey, Rand, um, did you see any pockets while you were in there? Uh, you said it's dispellable, right, Billy? You can dispel it. You could actually just like destroy it with mundane yeah let's just just uh erase it off this crack it and break the rock apart with its okay. it's drawn on right yeah it's like actually a tapestry as well like a circular tapestry being laid out i'm gonna swim away from these people start throwing acid on this tapestry it doesn't work I think you actually need to Damn. have it's someone on there. Isn't it? If someone's on there, you can get them with AOE. Here, Roger, come lay down for a second. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to be standing here, chipping away anyway, so, I mean. Do you guys feel like uh, you can just yeah, destroy the, the stonework and scratch out these ropes? It'll take you, depending on how many people work, 30 minutes. <laughs> So. I mean, we looks all, like it might take Thomas a while. We yeah. we are underwater, so I mean that yeah. tracks. <laughs> yeah, the fire's not going to be the most effective. All right, oh, it, it takes a while. It takes you guys about. It. I mean, if you're using a lot of offensive attacks, not not like a sling, but something <laughs> actually good, then <laughs> you yeah, you'll be able to destroy it in I don't know about ten minutes or so. So you guys can work together and destroy all the glyphs. Lose 
I'll start doing a prayer healing. More damage with my sling blower. My prayer healing goes off. There's uh Oh, I so myself, Rend, Lily, Norin, and Nara. Wait, that's five. Thomas. One more. And Thomas. 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 Yeah, Thomas needs it. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas, Thomas runs over. You have my blessing. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna upcast it. So sixteen. And then, what did we learn about this rune over here? That it needs an arcana and you might something feel or other. And You'll be able to get rid of it without a spell slot if you if you're okay. That's good. How bad do we want in there? Want me to try? Might Go well. for it. Yep. I first you need an investigation check. I'll guidance you. If that it helps at all. So Yeah, it doesn't take any more than an action to investigate it. Alright, it's a glyph of warding, Lily. And it's got explosive runes. You feel like you could try and decipher the nodes and dispel it without having to use a, like a spell slot, but like basically disarm a magical trap with an arcana check. If yeah, failing I'll to do so, try. you will let off the glyph and it's going to explode. I and will. I understand. And it's going I'll to try. Kill, and it's going to kill Rand. Put guidance on her again. If that doesn't require more than knowing it. Yeah. It's just an action, really. Alright, you hit the correct nodes early and ooh, the glyph is deactivated. You also find out that uh, the reason why it didn't go off when you put a javelin into it, um, but it did explode when you guys walked over it, because it was set to only explode when uh, non worshippers of Thorisden step on it. Oh. That was the okay. trigger. And the Javon was a worshipper of Thoris. It's pretty, it's pretty uh, <laughs> specific. Yeah, it's a bit you, prejudice. It, it uh, yeah, glyph of warding can be very specific. All right, uh, in here there's just like a little ruined vestry. In fact, it doesn't even really look like this was even completed. And there's just like a twelve foot tall, rough, arched stone doorway that just leads out to the swampy waters, down a mile west of the styes. Cool. Well, well, let's go see how the town folks are uh, feeling now. I mean, probably still shitty since half their town's on fire. Yeah, and they like jumping out of the buildings and that. You guys feel like. <laughs> uh, I think Roderick wants to jump down here. There's probably not going to yeah, be much, well, much hope for the styes, but hopefully the survivors, they can reloc relocate and make a new life. Do you imagine that uh, yeah, they'll probably be displaced? Maybe a few alchemists may remain to continue. Unchecked experiment. Roderick, you want to dive down there? Well, I can't get back out because I can't swim. <laughs> but it might be worth checking down there. Someone has a rope. No, I, I can tie a rope off and climb down there. You look do down it. there, Roderick. What's your dark vision? Mm -hmm. 90? 90 feet. Actually, update that. I've only had it set to 60. Yeah, it seems to go back to 60 often. I think it's because uh, it's usually. I'm going to save it to your token. Alright. Uh, okay. So you planted a seed down there? Yeah, you actually can't Not see the, the bottom. It's more than 90 feet. <laughs> Just throw it. I will tie a rope it's off. Filled, it's filled full of ink as well. You can really actually okay. only see about 20 feet. The rest is deep pitch black. Ah. It could be something useful down there. I'll start swimming down. All right. Armor on the way. You swim yeah. down, and uh, you swim for a couple hundred feet, Thomas, before you seem to just hit like a submerged cavern, and you can't see anything. You're covered in ink, and you can make an investigation check while you're down here. You can't see anything, so you're just feeling around. 
Cooper get this. And, uh, <laughs> there's stuff down there. Probably bones. Lots and lots of bones. Alright. I figure this sucks down here and swim out. He found his roommate. You don't find anything of value or interest, and you swim out and you... Work up in ink. It does, it's not like poisonous ink though, but it washes off pretty quickly as well. You reveal your, Good. the beautiful blue hue of your bald head. <laughs> Are Kraken corpses or parts of Krakens worth anything? Kraken ink? Yeah, you feel like you could People? use parts I... of it. Yeah, for like, uh, crafting. Magic items. Is Ren gonna milk a Kraken? <laughs> you can milk anything if it has nipples. Let's just drag the whole thing out, grab a tentacle, put it over her shoulder. I've got a lot of stomach acid on me. Hook up some. Everyone has a calamari for dinner. Plus, then we can prove that we killed it. Yeah, I should take the um. It's way too big for you guys to carry, but you can cut some pieces off it. It must weigh over a ton. <laughs> I uh, bring an eyeball. Does it have a tooth? Can I cut out the tooth? Yeah. It it's has a like a beak. A sphincter, like more. Ah, there's. <laughs> yeah, go ahead everything and cut has... that off, Rand. Everything has sphincter like moss. I'm not yeah. touching the sphincter. It, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's got, it's got like a, a squid configuration, so it has a beak and ink and all that, so you can get that. But whatever you want, you guys can just note it, and it'll be used for crafting magic items or a trophy. You just use your imagination. Eyeball, a tentacle, sphincter like more, whatever your imagination brings you to. Try to get its ink stack. I want to. Yeah. I want to cut off the tattoo, like this, the skin part for the, where the tattoo of their uh, there is doing is. Okay, that is very gory to watch. And you've got a nice yeah. instant flesh patch. Make a nice handbag or something out of it. So, <laughs> well, no, you can you can do it as a trophy or a symbolism or something. Whatever you need to do with it. You can cut that off. All right. Does that tentacle have spikes on it? No, it doesn't really have spikes. No. It's they kind of—I guess they are like spikes. Yeah, they look—they look like spikes, a little bit, slightly spiky. All right. Uh... All right. You guys feel like you've tied this up now. You've cannibalized the Kraken, Kraken, and you know where Hecaton is. If you exit from the spire, it's about a mile back to the styes. It's up to you guys what happens next. I'll just move on Maybe to that. We can now. just go straight back to a city, right? So yeah, this is like the styes language folly. It was there the whole time. You could have just come. Uh, through, yeah. You could have just come <laughs> to the styes and be like, I want to go there, and be like, no. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're about a mile off. In, in this area and uh, so yeah, what do you guys want to do if you if you head up that spire you'll just you'll see the the spies and the styes in the distance I'm thinking we'll probably rest can yeah. tonight and then head out to the Hecaton yeah, area go to the king's suite in Rother's lamp Enjoy that uh, one-walled room. We don't we have the uh, basement palace? Yeah. Oh, the alchemist you do, lab. But... It's closer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You guys swim back into the styes, and yeah, you feel like there's not much hope for the styes. But at least you gave the remaining denizens a, a chance to to escape without them getting devoured and you've stopped these murders you uh, head back to reference quarters head in there you guys take a rest so you guys can all take a long rest and make a plan as to what's next reference said um, that he, he's going to go out of town for a couple of weeks so you're not expecting him back Nara, uh, 
I know this probably isn't super important or whatever, but Nara gives Norn back the spear he loaned her and says, Thank you, my antlered friend. <laughs> uh, no problem. Uh, and I'll like, take the helm off momentarily. <laughs> the antlers do go with the helm. <laughs> they don't stay on my head. <laughs> what? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, also Nara, he just blew want, all our minds. If you wanted to like, really is shocked. try and clear Jam's name, we could say that you go to the the uh, constable's office and prevent, present the evidence and whatnot and clear his name if that is important to you. Yes, 100%. All right, you I don't need... have the um, long rest option. Is that gone? Oh, I'll fix no? that up. Or am I just... I'll, I'll put it back just... on. So, uh, yeah, you um, you meet with Constable Jute. And she uh, she's the constable of the style. She's the one that originally turned you guys away if you tried to poke your your nose into the affairs of the ghost lands and murderer. When you present this evidence to her, she uh, doesn't actually seem surprised that Mr. Dory was corrupt. And she tells you that he was actually paying the guards to keep quiet and try and cover up this murder. And in fact, she tried to openly speak out about the murders as well. She had her own guards turn against her. But without with this irrefutable evidence, you feel that Jam's name will be cleared. And uh, we can have DM inspiration as well, Nara. You kind of completed your little story arc there, a bit of a mini personal quest of yours. Um, but she also, you know, you can fill her in on everything, and she says she'll try to work with the town folk and clear everyone out of the styes. And she thinks that most people are going to leave after all of these explosions and the murders. And, uh, you can say a prayer for yeah, Tom. I, Hopefully, uh, yeah, I wish her best of luck. Yeah, she seems very honourable and honest. Like, probably the only honourable and honest public servant in the styes. Um, she's a little bit nervous at first, but when you prevent her with the evidence, she uh, yeah, she also admits that deep down she didn't believe that Jam was the sole killer. And thanks you, and uh, wishes you well with your next adventure. And ask you got nothing to do, you should join us, Nara. And ask why your uh, skin is constantly <laughs> burning when you, you're not underwater. Because of that disease that you had. <laughs> no, you um, <laughs> you did actually have a disease there as well, Nara, but you guys can cure that up. You'll find something to do that, like, lesser. Yeah, that is... Uh, That's that right, is... we have to invite Nara to join us on the bigger quest. She she came in only for this one. Yeah. I was going to say, she would have definitely, while we're doing downtime here, asked you guys to fill her in all this King Hecaton and all this other stuff she heard. It's pretty crazy shit. Lots of giants. <laughs> Big giants. <laughs> and uh, that's outside of serving Cormir. I mean, her primary motivation is the greater good, so she would definitely join you guys to go further with this thing. Nor is just some kid from the forest that thought adventuring would be fun. <laughs> That's his whole backstory. <laughs> Found some antlers and fucking <laughs> head down the trail. Hell it's, yeah. It's a grizzled veteran with PTSD now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fascination with, with javelins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, you guys rest up and you, know, you can tie up any loose ends of what you have in the styes. You don't need to roleplay any of that. You can just narrate through that. But uh, you will need to think about your next move. So what is that? What is the next move? Do you guys want to see the map? Uh, Favoring map? Yes, please. Where, where... Hold on. We need to buy a ship or something, don't we? Uh, our ship is currently... Mirabar. Where? Um, Who knows? 
<laughs> We've abandoned the horse. You guys left it at Mirabal with the with the Griffins. <laughs> you guys left it at Mirabal with the Griffins, with with Alistair and TikTok. Oh. Abandoned it like a horse. If that it's a remember. <laughs> If it's a mode of transport, we're going to abandon it. <laughs> Definitely. Okay, we, can just, we can teleport back to Mirabar and then use the airship to get over to where we think King Hecton is, right? Hey, you guys that know actually that King Hecton's like to... around these islands. One of these three islands. Either Turn, Purple Rock, yeah. or Gundalan. We definitely need the ship for that, so we're going to have to... Let's teleport back, like you said, exactly, and... And then, uh, yeah. Okay. How are you teleporting? Someone's got the uh, Harper teleport spell. Or Lily. Circle. Lily. I think Lily can teleport. Okay. Yes. Uh, I can. I can use a spell for that. All right, Lily, teleports you guys back to the mirror bar. Harper teleportation circle. You're back in mirror bar, and you head down to the docks to find your airship. When you get there, you meet with the dragon cultists. You've got a, you know, there were some dwarves here as well, Mirabarian dwarves. The cultists, Nizroth and Trout, they tell you that the dwarves uh, were happy to be in Mirabar because it's a dwarves' heaven. And they've been carousing in the taverns, and Trout says, uh, I've got some bad news. Elster stole what? the airship. And that's where we're in the session. Wait, is that the engineer the engineer guy? Yes. He has stolen yeah. the airship. <laughs> oh, that's a bastard. Well engineer send him a message. Guy. Yeah, we picked him up uh... <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna die. Uh, he took a real remind me. into that airship. And he offered uh, to Remind me where the it. engineer guy's from? You found him in the stone giant cave he was in a yeah. barrel no he was like in the stone giant's pocket or something like that like a coin yeah oh right no, right right, right. Yeah, Alistair. No. no in his weapon it was in his weapon wasn't it no no that was the fire giant. oh in the that was another yeah. halfling this guy's a gnome oh and uh okay. yeah you, you rescued him and he took a real interest to the airship and he uh he worked on the airship as an engineer making some adjustments fitting things making improvements and repairs and he seemed to have stolen the airship probably misunderstanding mm. <laughs> sure well he might you have said... been trying to steal it from the cultist which is kind of fine yeah. you can uh, send him a sending or whatever right and talk to him where are our griffins by the way you got a few <laughs> griffins the griffins are there he didn't steal the griffins. Oh, yeah, so. He tricked everyone. It doesn't seem like taking them underwater would have been a good idea. Well, I, I understand that. I, I was just, you know. Yeah, that's still that's he the way you mouth. left them. I think you left them at like there's like an eerie there that you left them like when you, when you got the training so they've been looked after. Um, but yeah, think about now uh, whether you want to try and track down your airship. I know Than definitely wants to. He loves that airship. Or, oh yeah. <laughs> or perhaps you may want to just uh, figure out another way to get through the trackless sea. Like go to Luskin and get a ship or speak to your the Harpers and see if they can fit you out with a crew. Uh, okay. Or try and track down Ellis and see where he is. Gotta be somewhere. Let's just let's just water walk that shit. <laughs> Whatever it is. <laughs> make sure you're level 12 for next week because everyone levels up. Long rest and level 12 for all. Sweet. Than paid that gnome to steal the ship. Probably. <laughs> oh no! Don't don't steal it. Please, I'm totally pretending back. to be shocked right now. Who's that? What, no, what? Remind me again. You're in you're in a town as well, Mirabar. So in their specialty is gemstones and things like that. And uh, if you want to buy any uh, anything from the player's handbook, like mundane equipment or any gemstones or maybe certain spell components, just let me know as well. Or some, you know, spell scrolls or potions that are on that list somewhere. Uh, spell scrolls for sure. I ha I'll, I'm I'm gonna stock up on, um, make sure I'm gonna top off my javelins. Maybe get a few more spears. Sure. Yeah. Go to the uh, there's a in the party folder. There's a folder called shops. 
and it's got all the stuff there is, is always available at most cities, all that stuff. Oh, and darts. I'm gonna get a lot of darts now. <laughs> I'm taking I'm taking sharpshooter. I don't care. Oh shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, if any of you guys are interested in the new feats as well, I think I might have mentioned it. Let me know if, if you're interested in one and I'll see if it's good and we'll use it. Alright, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks everyone. Alright, later. Have a good weekend. Thanks everybody. What feats is he talking about? They're they're the